Good evening and welcome to the Housing ONS meeting. It's now 7 pm and I would like to start the meeting. I'm Councillor Lynn Worrell and I am chair of this committee. I would remind to everybody present that this meeting is being recorded for publication on the council's website. As this meeting is being held in South Essex College, instead of the council chamber, there is a time limit for the use of the venue, which is 9.30. If the items on the agenda are not concluded by 9.30, we will adjourn this meeting and recommence at the next housing ONS meeting. So, moving on to the agenda, um, item one. Um, I have no apologies. Oh, yeah, we do have apologies. No, no we don't have any apologies. We do have Councillor Redstall, who is joining us online. Um, and um, for her own reason, she's joining online, which would mean that she can take partake in the discussions, but not on the votes and all the recommendations, should there be the need for us to vote, um, which hopefully there shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see how that goes. And um, Grace, no other apologies? Uh, no, Chair, but Councillor Fletcher and Councillor Van Bates are here. Okay, thank you. Well, hopefully they'll make it here soon. Um, we can <coughs> ONS committee meeting held on the 9th of November 2021 to be approved as correct. Are there any comments on the accuracy of the minutes? No, fine. Okay, okay minutes are approved. Great. Um, I've agreed to one item of urgent business. Update on the final. On, on the fire of Lionel Oxley House, which has which I am requesting myself and officers to give an update. Thank you, Chair. I will invite uh, Ice Police to give an update. Uh, you will have received the notes, the briefing notes that were circulated early today. Um, apologies for, for, for the circulation notes, but we were on in Oxford since last week and we were working really hard to get that done in time. Um, Alistair will uh, take this time to take you through the, um, the note itself and uh, we will open the room for questions should you have any of that. Good evening, Mr. Burton, Mr. Burton, and the Secretary of State Housing. So, um, the Mr. business. So, on the 26th of December 2021, uh, just before 11.30 in the morning, um, the, the fire incident at Lionel Oxley House was raised. Um, the incident took place in the big room on the ground floor of the tower block, um, which contains 50 residential flats. The, the detection system in the big room um, alerted staff members at the CCTV Town Church um, in the room barrack at 11.29 in the morning of smoke uh, coming from that area. And so the CCTV control room then reviewed cameras on site and then were able to contact the County Fire and Rescue who attended. The following units um, and the just heard a note on 12 19. Essex County Fire and Rescue confirmed the source of the mission had been fully extinguished. So, council officers were also alerted at that point where the CCV control room alerted Harper Close, which the other guys sent during that time. So, council officers from three different departments within housing started to arrive on site and drive them across. Essex County Fire and Rescue, because of the incident's nature, they identified that it was due to electrical infrastructure, therefore they contacted the UK Power Networks who arrived on site some time later. So the incident actually took place, the, um, as I mentioned, it's electrical infrastructure, and that infrastructure is actually owned and maintained by the UK Power Networks and the chemical infrastructure, therefore we had to wait for them to attend site to actually fully investigate and also to make safety um, uh, electrical infrastructure there play because only they've got access to their own substations and can't find which they access them. Therefore, we couldn't undertake any work to do more of those steps to get them. So, but they've done that and then we'll continue to be able to do that in the case to follow. So, at approximately 12.15, um, when the Tennessee Duty Officer, who was on call at that time on Boxing Day, um, arrived on site, he was wearing a Thorough Council coat, um, which was highly visible in the fact that he was a member of Thorough Council staff. He then proceeded to door knock throughout the block looking to try and fully establish. Um, my, I, myself actually attended the site on the day 
and some of the ice and aggressive sample farmers who need to know the structure to put down the sample and then to look at it and start to build a picture in terms of what we need to do and what the information is coming in in this type. So we went through the whole incident aggressive sample fire and rescue and then approximately 12.45. Um, we started to bring to the and the suppliers, etc. And then we got to a position where about 1 p.m. they actually had to decide back to us in terms of their operations and the So the tendency officer who had started to make his way by the block door knocking, etc., um, he found that most people were at home and therefore he was able to establish a picture really relatively quickly in terms of who had to buy and who had not to buy. So the way in which the block split, we've got five suppliers coming in, the rest of the property is split by four suppliers and then one landlord supply. The landlord supply was never affected, it was actually in a different location within the block. So when the fire brigade um, led, attended the incident, what they do as a matter of course is they uh, connect up some dry rides from the building that was over there, so they the passenger lifts for safety means as well because the block operates under a safety policy, so they need to make sure. In the event of the incident, no person in the community is lifts as well. So, at the point when they tried to reinstate the lifts, unfortunately, the lifts didn't come back into service. It was reported on the day that uh, our service and contractor didn't actually attend until the early um, morning the next following day. And we have recognised that and say, great, in terms of the service we provide, and we have addressed that with the contractor. So, what the picture that we established on site immediately after the incident is 14 households um, had been affected and they were left without supply. And speaking to Mr. Banner at some time, they were clear in terms of the level of damage that had occurred. Um, unfortunately, they weren't going to be able to reinstate it in a quick manner because it's something that the structure was completely um, disintegrated and therefore needs to be put in place. So we identified 14 households that were off supply and were off supply for the next day. So at that point, um, the tenancy officer had spoken to them in terms of their arrangements of where they could stay, etc. 11, uh, 11 households then made arrangements with family members and friends and families, and we removed these three households where they, they didn't have anywhere else to go and therefore hotel accommodation was provided for them. Um, but the all households were provided with the tenancy management officer's number, and so if they needed any further support at any time, they could make contact with them and provide exactly how we did it. We then followed up the next day. Um, in this time, I, I personally had a conversation with the Inco at uh, approximately 10 p.m. that night about this incident and also another incident in the borough. Um, on there, so I, I was sort of trying to get the team fully informed in terms of the picture of what was happening in the Inco Pound Ellis, trying to establish timeframes, etc. But um, so the tenancy management officer then made further phone calls to all 14 residents the following day in terms of their living accommodation, also to give them an update in terms of what we're looking at in time. So on the 27th of uh, approximately one o'clock, um, you can find out it's actually starts to mobilise in terms of undertaking full repair. And that's really then sort of the work started on going on site. And again, we got to a picture in terms of we could understand that the, we weren't going to have a full supply back onto their properties that day. And therefore, all accommodation being were again discussed with the residents of the affected um, and uh, the five households were then placed into hotel accommodation for the following night. So supplies started to actually come back on between 9 and 10 p.m. that night on the 27th, but clearly um, the residents couldn't be expected to return at that time before the accommodation was covered until the 28th. So residents were contacted on the 28th by both the tenancy management officer and MIS to talk to them through about returning to their property, and we had someone on standby from MIS so they could then speak to them if they had any unknown problems. We'd also have MIS go around and check every minute to look at to make sure we had supplied the 14 people to go back to their homes and confident that their area of structure was back on. So, going back to the actual incident in terms of um, what happened to say, so the, the big room where this actually took place and the electrical structure in place, there's actually a water suppression sprinkler system actually in that building itself. And when this actually happened, it, it was more of an event where the infrastructure, electrical structure, smoldered rather than the full flames because no actual part of the building structure caught fire and no rubbish in the building caught fire at all. The sprinkler system never went off because it was never needed to go off. And so there was clean smoke generation from that, but when the fire came to the day, they are certainly dealt with them at the time. So it's uh, I'm trying to cover some of the main points in here as well. Um, so in terms of the, I know the questions were asked, um, 
previously regarding the human detection system in the block. We've done a lot of work in recent years regarding the, the safety of um, residents in our town blocks, and we take it extremely seriously. And therefore, we've always made sure that the advice to our residents is very clear. And it's a state put policy in place, and therefore, that's where you don't have a community fire alarm in place. You can never have a situation where that many residents trying to evacuate block based on the human alarm. Every resident's flat has detection system within their home, and even throughout this whole period, that's not battery backup. Therefore, that was operation is all operation of the fire alarm system in the site throughout this. And that was all tested when people test their homes broke, and so they can always report that they've got the ongoing issues. So there is no community fire alarm detection system. It's a detection system that controls fire doors within the block. Now, when that activates, effectively, all fire doors in the block close, and therefore, that, that's what happened at the time, and that has been reset, and that was done by our contractors in a timely manner, and therefore, it, throughout the period, there was never a compromisation of resident safety in the block, in their homes, otherwise we'd absolutely made the same arrangement that we believed in everyone else. Um, uh, so I've mentioned the point when the power went back on and when the residents returned to the home and etc. And so moving forward, we recognise the UK power networks. We need to make sure that obviously the rest of our infrastructure, our blocks, etc. are safe. Um, then alongside us, we treat our residents safely and we have the power around. Therefore, we have actually got officers and UK power networks come around all of our blocks this week where they're undertaking more servicing work, etc. to the infrastructure. Just as a reassurance measure, it's not due to any specific concern, it's simply just a reassurance measure to make sure we're doing all this practically possible to understand exactly what happened here. Now, the way in which UK Power Networks operate is very understandable in regard to the fact that the operational team are within the that aspect can't be the actual instrument that took place because essentially it's their infrastructure, therefore they need to have a transparent arm to make sure that it's fully investigated and the cause is fully understood. At this current time, I can't tell you why their infrastructure failed. And that's the truth of it. That's been dealt with by their loss adjusting team who will issue the full report to us in due course. But they have assured us that they've checked with their infrastructure and safe and therefore there's no ongoing concern in terms of what they So um, obviously they're, they're a national body and therefore we're not being really the smallest to do what we do in terms of what they're saying. So internally we'll undertake a review in terms of the incident that happened to make sure that officers, it was a difficult time because uh, time of year um you know we're on site within the hour of that happening and therefore we, we supported the residents as, as much as we could and you know we recognize we all need service areas that we can and we're all taking into our ability of course to make sure that lessons that can be done with them. so um there's a few elements of work which i've covered there um we're also to get asked to give a degree of update in terms of the work that's on going with block clearly we've got a major infrastructure elements happening across these six blocks and it's it's a very difficult logistical project simply because these are people's homes and we need to respect them in that and this time of year is very difficult um everyone will be aware in terms of the level of work and who's replacing the windows etc that needs to be done in a timely manner in terms of the windows that come out we put back in the same day that's for our safety that's for our um sort of living conditions for residents etc we updated ward members in around November time in regards to uh, a proactive measure that we took. We recognised that the failure wasn't going to be on these blocks during this period. And therefore, we, we've made a payment for two residents of £120 to cover that additional cost, which have been fully calculated based on uh, temperatures over the last four years, based on the um, average phase of energy cost, etc. So we've tried to take a proactive measure to give them that one of payment to cover the additional fuel costs that they would take. And today, uh, we can say 254 residential um, properties in the entire box have taken up that payment. Um, I think that's covered all of it. So thank you very much. And, um, I'll just like to ask, and yes. 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 um, what often is this smoke that amounts from the electrical head is checked with prior to this uh, happening? How often do you uh, check the electrical? It's, it's a very infrastructure. Um, I personally couldn't tell you in terms of when they undertake checks of their substation and their equipment. Um, that is something we will be following up with them in terms of that regular regime. You know, absolutely, as I said, they've never been very proactive in coming to us and saying they recognise the seriousness. It's been something really well, it's Which is why our bus will be called. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we fully understand why. Yeah. We're trying to give as much information as we possibly can as well. We yeah, are, that um, 
Absolutely. And so the, the building in that regard worked initially. Anybody else got any questions? Joy? Nothing. We can't hear you. You're on mute. Is there any? Is there any way Grace can turn the volume up slightly, or not? Not really. No. Okay. Don't worry. I'll. I'll. I'll just strain. We have to just speak in the room. It's a big room. Yeah. Yeah. It is. No. It's all right. Don't worry. Have you got a question? Any questions on the on the report? No, I think I read it all this afternoon. I'm quite happy with what what happened. That's Van Dyke. No, just we, until we officially know what went wrong, I'd like it to come back though. Um, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. If you can come back to me to talk on, on it, just to make sure we're very happy with what officially happened. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree with you. I think I'm ready. Maybe if we can ask for them to provide a safety report of this infrastructure, because the money is supposed to carry out some kind of a safety check on this equipment. They need this every, every every week, every two weeks, or whatever, just to see if they're doing it. If you do something with the hard yeah, to see yeah. Yeah, or what's going on. It's just a check of those negative. Yeah, that's what yeah. 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 And also, I think the lesson. Is the second fire in that block? It, it is. Um, the very different so circumstances. Yeah. The two fires. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it before and then happen again. Yeah. It's, it's a different fire. fire. Yeah. 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 They're not one and the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Completely different. So, have you started to put together a lesson learned? You know, like, and we would do this differently. Um, so, so for me, I do probably have a few questions. Um, like when they knocked on all of the homes, mm -hmm. did anybody recall who they spoke to if they was okay? You know, the so the housing the, the DCO officer when they knocked, you know, how did they recall who was in, who wanted to stay, if there was three of them in there, four of them in there? You know, is there a, an actual record, or was they literally running around from the top floor to the bottom floor and there was no written, is there a written record of who they spoke to? I, I mean, surely there's a written record in terms of the 14 place. I, I right. honestly couldn't answer in terms of the other house. Right, because it sort of says that they spoke to nearly everybody, but we don't know who that nearly everybody is, and some residents are saying, you know, so they did record that because it was not everyone was in whilst there was good yeah. uh, 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 presence. Not that the one was in, so some people would follow that with a phone call. Those that were not in, so they needed to have recorded that to you know, no, no answer, no at home. So, so we have got a written record. So, so we would have that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've started already that lessons learned straight yeah. away. I mean, one of the acts, maybe not go into detail, but for example, there was this um, thing about you know, us having our officers having easy access to company cards to talk. So we've already started sort of dishing those out more widely uh, to, to those officers who might be sort of in a similar situation or their managers sort of on the day. So we've got a data for diary for more kind of wider review of this matter. Sending well. people to food bank was probably not a good idea in the in the food bank, but we're going to put you in a hotel where you'll have no cooking facilities. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, this was one of the things that was sort of, you know, kind of considered uh, on the day, but yeah, so you know, that sort of very detailed practical steps the absolute law have already reflected and will be reflected in some more. So, so could we do a resident consultation at that block to see how they felt? Because I've had some people who come to me and say, nobody knocked on my door, I was there, you know, they didn't knock on my door because I was there. Um, so that's why I'm asking mm -hmm. if we did really knock on every door because there were residents that are quite openly saying <clears throat> and then to the extent that they had to ring their little counter the next day to say you know i've not been spoken to what's going on we haven't been told i live here am i safe i don't know if i'm safe nobody spoke to me and then he had to contact the chief executive over christmas to say can you get somebody to contact these residents you know that you know, so that's why I'm asking if there were written, you know, um, log of what happened, you know, because if there's not, 
That's the lesson learned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peter has got his hand up. Uh, yes. uh, Within these teams. Yeah, can I, can I just clarify a few things? I mean, first and foremost, um, the fire officers, when the tenancy officer attended initially, the fire officers were doing a, were going from the top of the building and the, the tenancy officer went from the bottom of the building. It was the first occasion. They went through the whole building between, between the two groups, the fire officers and my tenancy officer. Second occasion, which is about an hour later, the tenancy officer went through the building with the mayor's officers as well. And that's when we were able to detect, as I say, there was, there was the 14 flats. Our focus then was obviously on those 14 uh, flats. But I say there was two runs that were undertaken within an hour, including Mears, my officers and with the fire officers as well. And I say then after that, once we knew where the problem was, our focus was obviously trying to deal with the 14 families. Yeah, I'm not questioning that you didn't knock. I'm just saying, have we got a record? We, we, have, we, we, have a, we have a record. Okay, so I just think in the review, it might be nice for you to speak to those 14 and see how we worked for them, especially. Um, because, like, they was, they was the ones that were displaced mm. more than anything. Mm. They're the ones that are now going to have to claim on their household insurance for something that wasn't theirs. You know, that will put their own premiums up. Um, so that's a little bit unfair. You know that for no fault of their own, they lost their Christmas, and they've got to go through the whole claim of um, claiming on their insurances. We can we do a focus group on, on those. I think that I think that it's important that we, you know, and that that feeds into the report that Councillor Mande, um, uh, you know, has mentioned. But I think it does need to come back because. It's, this is one flat, you know, I think that we do need to add that over and, and I'm glad that they're doing the checks across the whole of the borough. You know, this could be any of us that mm -hmm. are phoned up on Boxing Day and, you know, and the 27 people were still like, I need housing, you know, and that's like right, emergency housing and that's to find their way through to get that, you know, and, you know, and I, and I, and I appreciate that the portfolio holds got involved on the 27th and got somebody into emergency accommodation. So I think that there's a lot of lessons, you know, and it could be any of us. So that's why I thought it was really, really important that we bought this here. Um, and yeah, it's just like, so there's just some, some discrepancies, you know, and UK Power Network was saying that even now they don't know the real cause of the fire, you know, um, and that was it this afternoon. You know, I, I, I asked this afternoon and they said, even at this stage, we haven't been able to establish, you know, the real cause of the fire. So I think that it's still a little bit open-ended, um, you know, why it happened, how it happened, and um, we are lucky that we've got the, the systems in place. But I think that we can't say that actually it's all their fault because they haven't said that it's all their fault at this stage. You know, they're saying yeah, that they still don't it's, know. This is the scrutiny committee. Yeah, so we need to know. Absolutely, which is why I thought it, which is why I feel it was, you know, and I thank the officers for putting in the extra time because I know it's hard to put this together, um, but I, I certainly think it does need to come back to this committee, but also I do, and I did ask about the cladding being not because there are people in there now that live with damp and mould that didn't know that they had damp and mould because they're living with no cladding and we all know, I know how much my electric's gone up, £120 to add to their electric over the whole of the winter seems a little bit mildly to me, you know. Um, it's going to go nowhere. People are now saying that they're breathing cold air in their flats. You know, what can we do? To, what can we do to put that right? You know, I'm cold with my central heating on and the windows all shut and the curtains closed. How old are they in flats? They're not in the life. We was going to prove there at one time, but the residents didn't want me to come down. No, no, I want the residents, the residents were these flats are straight enough. So we did look at, you know, maybe pulling them down, but the residents were were weren't they? We did we did a lot of work. So, no. <coughs> they might change their mind now. They might do. But uh, is there any way of reviewing that hundred and twenty pounds? Is there any scope in the budget to give them more than hundred? It seems to be wisely. We are going to do one with the uh, contractors. We are also, we're going to begin now and we will take them. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So, because we're just about to reach January and February, mm. which to me is the coldest month. So, if they're cold now, and we've not really had the cold yet. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, as you say, March is back to the special yeah. yeah. So, so do we know when they'll get to be warm again? Summer? <laughs> <laughs> So in terms of the uh, the external tracking works, um, it seems to go back on. We're anticipating the space is going to start going back on okay. in February. Right. And so there was the part of the program there's always going to be a time when we're just going to be dropped exposed, unfortunately, as I said, the logistics of it, the meaning of it, which can be quite a protracted project. Which, um, yeah, All right, then. And well. Just to go back to the other bit of mm. report, sorry, I meant to ask you, know, smoke detectors, so I know that they're attached to the electric, but the electrics are off. Did anybody physically? Tests that people have put new batteries in, you know, because they, they ain't going to work because I know that they're on the backup, the electric, the backup, but the batteries, the first, you know, and we do know that people will cook, mm. and they'll go, I'll just take my hands, take that battery out. Yeah. Yeah. So, did anybody check that those flats did all that work in? Because I know we're not responsible. Well, that was gone years ago. Well, it, yeah, it's possible for them again now. Um, and so, sorry, I'll, I'll give you some power on the board just to um, clarify up that. You were actually extending the um, coverage box, so we're going to get more coverage. But in terms of when we went in, they checked all the electrical construction and properties and improvements and smoke alarms because they're half wired from the battery backup. So that's <coughs> not because of the fire? It's not because of the fire. We're actually doing it on the other box at the moment. So it's a supplementary measure we're doing anyway, just enhanced fire detection. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Joy, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I've got my hand up, Chair. Thank you. Um, it's just what Augustine mentioned. I'd actually forgot about the other fire in Lyloxy House. Is there any relevance between, you know, is there any join up with this one and what happened before? No. None at all? No. Okay. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. In one point in my head, he said that the fire detection system in place within the community area to our block. It's not an alarm system. So, I mean, he said the primary function of the community system is to control the fire block, which means if there is a fire in the community area, there will not be any alarm to alert the residents that there is a fire. So, this is a very big problem. So, if you're going to be upgrading, would you be upgrading? Fire detection system in the community, but just like most buildings now, it's all alarmed all the way through. No, so it, it goes back to the I briefly covered the point around the state, but so we can't have a alarm system in communal areas because effectively what you could have is risk that could put themselves in danger because it's, it's a single staircase block. So if you had an alarm system and everyone become alerted to that, you know, human instinct is going to be they're going to leave their premises, aren't they? With, in the last three years, we've actually upgraded all the fire doors in there to give enhanced level of fire protection. Essentially, a resident in their home needs to react to the alarm system or if they're affected by heat or smoke in their individual dwelling. That's what we need to do because the fire brigade, if we got to a point where the, the building needs to be evacuated, the fire brigade would manage that situation appropriately because we need to make sure the residents are safe in terms of coming down. That's also the way in which the fire brigade get up through the box as well. So the detection system is going to go in. Is solely again going to be in their residential home. It will alert them to their individual circumstances, and that's the key point we need to get back to residences. They need to react in terms of their individual circumstance, and it's a safe policy to be placed in these blocks. So, the communal detection system, and it was in 2018, um, thorough actually went a bit in terms of what we required to do. So, I mentioned very early in the report that the actual fire was um, identified by the assistant being controlled. Um, and so they were the ones who actually alerted to this extent for our That link is something unique in terms of what we put in our blocks. That's not actually a legislative and necessary means that we need to do. But we recognise that after obviously um, things that happen um, in the West London, that it, well, we need to try and do everything we could to make sure our residents are safe. And therefore, that's a piece of equipment that we install. And therefore, that system has worked on a number of occasions as well. So we have actually got a link where it is reviewed by CCTV. Then they get that notification if it goes off. Yes, yeah, so you said some of the communal areas, it has some information about having fire alarm detectors there, and you don't do that because it would panic people, everyone would rush out onto the borders and come down. 
And so the advice is to stick in your own apartment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, wasn't that the advice of West London? And that led to tragedy. Uh, uh, I, I don't think, yeah. I, I think yeah. we can comment uh, about what happened there. We really can't comment on that. Mm. This is this is still their, their regulation. This is for the state mm. block, and these are the sort of rules that we're sticking to, and, and making it obviously as safe for residents as possible. The point of those doors closing. So these are communal fire doors. I don't know if you recall, if you go up and down the stairs, they're sort of heavy, really heavy, yeah. heavy yeah. kind of yeah. you know metal yeah. doors. So. We have got them open on a magnet at all times so that people, you know, carrying shopping or with baggies don't have to carry on opening them because what we found people were doing is just wedging the door open, which means that in case of fire, they can't shut because they're wedged open. So in case of fire being detected so that flames, the heat, the magnet, let, let go of it, the door closes. Mm -hmm. So you've got further, and there's the word I can't say, that's the one of, of, of the areas of the building. So you've got people safe in their homes and then you've got also safe areas in the communal spaces where fire or smoke won't get through the fire door and it gives the fire brigade more time to deal with the incident. And as I was saying, it's for the fire brigade in a safer block to decide whether the block needs to be evacuated. And if they do so, they will manage the evacuation in their own controlled way. Um, and that's what we sort of work to, and that's the sort of current sort of, you know, rule on it. Well, we're not fire experts. I mean, okay. I this <laughs> this is just what I read. I'm only repeating it, what I read in the news. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, and you're right to ask this question. Yeah, I mean, the idea of these committees to look at things not in an expert point of view, but uh, you think, yeah. yeah. Well, we're here to be the voice of the residents, yeah. aren't we, and to yeah. ask those questions Absolutely. that they haven't got the opportunity to ask. So that's why, you know, we're here. So, so the learning of the lift not working, so it wasn't only the 14 houses, you can imagine that in there is, you know, 40 families, and most of them are going to be young families with bush chairs, and they couldn't go out. You know, if you lived on the 11th floor with your two children and you had a bush chair, mm -hmm. you won't go nowhere for two days. You know, so again, there's got to be some some learning from that which needs to be contained within the board. Because, like, nobody sits on old age pensioner, like these old age pensioners, and I know there is because they didn't want their homes pulled down, you know, and um, so I remember them from from that far back. Mm -hmm. And they come to quite a lot of the community events, you know, they couldn't come out. You know, like that's not fair. They were stuck there because of the lift. So I think that yes, I think there does need to be a concern. Yes, I do think that residents need to be part of the future and um, report back. So I suppose we just need to know how quickly that can happen, considering so, where so, we are so, in the municipal yeah. year. So I guess the the things that are within our control yeah. could happen probably in time for the March okay. one, although the report writing is, is very tight because obviously yeah. this is just a briefing note yeah. that the board goes yeah. through yeah. Uh, those are the hoops. I don't know that we can vouch that UK Fire Networks will come back with the, no. their report because that is really what we are also waiting for right. and exactly your point. Yeah. We need to know from them because obviously we know of the day they took responsibility we know it's their infrastructure, but they're now finding out what caused the infrastructure to fail. And obviously that's very important for us. So I don't know that, that we can you know, vouch that this will happen. We're hoping sooner or later, mm -hmm. but... So, so will you be claiming against them? Absolutely. That's, that's what you are asking to do, is that you're claiming against them. Yes. So you could have said these things a bit better then. <laughs> <laughs> Give them one meal. <laughs> Um, okay, so, so what do we think? Do we think that we want an initial report back in March? Yeah, yeah we do, we do. Okay, because we would like it to come back. And I think that the residents you know, need some clarity on exactly the of findings. Joy? Yeah, sorry, I'm not sure whether you can actually see my hand sometimes. I your hand and I keep dancing, Joy. That's all right, I know. It's a bit awkward where we are, isn't it? Um, 
I just, having read the notes and read the report quite thoroughly, I think we've also got to give a, we've obviously hopefully learnt by this, um, but I think we've also got to give a little bit of credit because reading that, everybody, the fire authority and officers moved quite quick on this one. And I, and I think we've got to give a little bit of credit sometimes for how fast they all moved, you know, to to get in there and check everywhere. So I just wanted to give a little bit of credit where it's due sometimes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Vector, and I, I couldn't agree more. I think from the officer viewpoint, we really have had the very initial uh, reactions that it's been very well dealt on the ground. Uh, all, every single one of our residents has been saved, looked after. Uh, we've had tremendous response from officers. It was Boxing Day for, for everyone. It didn't stop on Boxing Day. The likes of Alistair and his team and Peter and his team carried on working throughout. So it's really, really well done from officers. So thank you. And, and the report should show the good of what, you know, that's what it needs to be. Well, it done. needs to have a, this worked really well. This was amazing, you know, you know, thanks to the officers. But, you know, this is what we're going to be focusing on. You know, that's why we do these reviews. It's not always to say, is a big stick, we're going to hit you with it. You know, it's to remind yourself of what does go well. Um, when you're capturing, you know, what didn't go so well and hopefully, you know, you take our network, you know, are gonna come back. But as of today they said still nothing. Okay. okay. Everybody finished with that. Yes. And thank you for the time that you put in to get that done really quickly. So I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, 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 yes. Um, right, so we're moving on to item four. Does anybody have any um, declarations of interest for tonight's meeting? No. no. Okay, so moving on to item five, which um, is the, the council's main agenda and the, the housing development programme update on pages 13 to 18 of the agenda. Uh, that's, uh, that's you, Keith, yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Keith. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Um, so, Keith Andrews and Strategic League for Housing Development. Um, I'll try and speak up as best as I can. I'm a bit of a gravelly voice at times, but I'll do my best. Um, so, um, I was at the last meeting, and uh, from that, that some more detailed, more descriptive information was required. So in, uh, in, in the reports about the housing development update. So I've tried to provide some more detail in this report. Um, I think it's a difficult balance between summary and fine detail, but you want this to the committee. And of course, I'm happy to work with the committee to get that balance right as we go forward. So I may have struck it better this time, I may not, but I'm happy to, to work with the committee to get that, that, that right level of detail and overall summary. And, and the report starts with some general information um, and then goes on to some scheme specific detail. So I'll, I'll start in the general information bit under the introduction and background. Um, and so that, you know, we know that these reports do come regularly. Uh, in this report, um, I just wanted to point out that, you know, that it makes reference to locations both within the housing revenue account, which I'll sort of call the HRA onwards, uh, the general fund. Um, so it can expect, you know, currently we can expect that sites held in the HRA, uh, if there are room for development, will largely be for HRA, you know, <coughs> housing stock, um, and typically let in mind uh, with the council's current policy for letting new homes, and the council's policy still stands at 70% uh, of market rent or the local housing allowance for the area, and I should have added in that line, whichever is the law. Um, so there's further work. Uh, will be done, and I only raised this before, Council, um, regarding affordability in Thurrock. Um, and so we comment here to my left um, what, what affordable means for um, Thurrock, for those who live in the Thurrock, uh, will be picked up as part of the, the new housing strategy. Um, and also, and that also specifically consider you know, social work setting. So that is a piece of work that isn't done yet, but it's part of that ongoing housing strategy and development because I know that's important to use the So I'll move on to say that um, 
any sites that are approved for housing development and held within the general fund, um, they may be offered some thorough regeneration limited, subject to approval, to, to the building processes for approval there. Those sites would generally be required to deliver 35% of anything they build as affordable housing in line with planning policy. And they will be offered to the council in nature like that 35 cents. So just to give a bit more of a broad overview of the program, um, we've got the, the bar chart in the committee. Um, and so the, the blue bars um, reflect the start on the sites um, and the red ones for completions. Um, these are, of course, it's a program, it's subject to change. It's where we were at the moment that I wrote this report. So it will change. But we can see that we have um, a, a large you know, blip of, of new sites coming to start. Um, and as time passes, those start to convert into completions. So that's probably where they are at the point in time. Uh, that reflects about 11 sites across all of the program, whether they're for the HRA or whether it's what we would expect to potentially go to CRO. So at least it gives you a bit of a feel of the flow of the program as it stands at the moment. And it will change uh, 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 looking at the new development program. So I'll, I'll turn on for my to the um, just a detail on individual sites. So I'll, I'll, I'll go through them and you'll, you'll surely you'll, you'll guide me if I'm going too slow or not more. No, absolutely. Um, so the uh, first one I'll talk about is at Low and Road, where there's been a, a, a planning committee now on the 2nd of December, which they resolute, a resolution to grant planning permission for four homes. Uh, that was a, we, we adjusted and reduced the number of homes there following various um, the, the consultations and the previous committee decisions, planning committee decisions. And once uh, constructed, these homes will be um, let in line the council's allocation policy. Uh, it's a zero gas development, it's got electric vehicle charging points. The homes will be designed to high in category two of the building rates, <coughs> which means they're accessible and they're adaptable and must meet the needs of occupants with different needs uh, and, and changing needs over time. Um, so that four units, small is probably done. Um, the scheme is, is getting ready to go out to tender and preparing on that. Um, the next one is the uh, 3.3 in the report, the Culver Centre and Field. At the other end of the scale, 173 units, and including an affordable housing proportion of 62 affordable homes on the site of the former Culver Centre and Field. So this is made uh, held within the general fund. Um, uh, it's uh, subject to, to member approval. The site be offered to sell to the TRL, and there's a separate paper on this agenda going through that in a lot more detail. Um, at 3-4, uh, the, the, the report refers to Broxburn Drive, uh, which is uh, land within the HRA in South Buckingham, a uh, housing estate there. And the proposal is to develop at the moment up to 38 new council homes, a bit of a mix of flats and houses. Um, there's been uh, online consultation, and then there's been on-site consultation with the marquees and the good old-fashioned way. Um, and that, can, I mean, that consultation closed uh, end of October. So residents expressed the preference for improved green space and concerns over parking, as every every development will do. Um, and, and also about how the current state can contribute to antisocial behaviour. So we, we are revising those uh, designs that have been through um, that consultation. Um, and, we, and we are looking to see how we can find some various state improvements to be carried out at the same time as the new development to improve the state's layout and, and to go to upgrading of common areas. So it's not just dropping in new homes, there are some upgrades to the existing residents, facilities, and common areas as well. I'll move on then to item 3.5, and again, we've got a more detailed report on this agenda. So briefly, just to touch on um, the, you know, the fact that the council is supporting for some time the principle of residential development on the part of the council, of this council of state, the CO1, um, and um, that could deliver 
uh, into new homes, um, potentially you know, within the HRA for affordable warming. Um, so again, we'll come back to that in detail at that other paper. Moving further down to 3.6, we talk about Biggeron's Way, which I'm, I'm sure the committee will remember. There's, there's a small garage site over in Chapel St. Mary, um, held within the HRA, that does suffer from antisocial behaviour. Um, we're looking to develop eight two bedroom houses for rent um, with, with associated car parking and upgraded access road. Um, and we'll need to retain the existing footpath so that the existing residents uh, have access to their homes and we're engaged with the, uh, the, uh, the crime, I'm trying to get the, the correct phrase, from the police crime officer um, to ensure that what we are developing there meets all the requirements in terms of community safety. Um, because sometimes access footpaths can be you know, areas in, in hot spots for um, antisocial behaviour. So we're very much engaging with the police on that. Um, but and also, you know, something to improve lighting and that sort of matter to, to deal with community safety concerns. Um, we've done some resident consultation in July. Um, we had a drop in site, we, we had online, we had bits and we had phone, we had the whole, whole works. Uh, again, issues of concern of parking uh, is um, about access, construction, traffic, the usual stuff that even we might be concerned about for housing development in that area. Um, and uh, we are in you know, further discussion, uh, we need to be in further discussion with those existing residents who get the rights to be impacted during the development process. Um, and we're looking to come forward with a planning application, which of course is subject to its own consultation process um, in the spring. Um, a, the next thing that on there is the 35 unit count, uh, shelter, sheltered housing scheme in Calcutta Road in Tilbury. Um, that is designed for older people, um, and printed natural light for circulation. Um, it's a really good high quality scheme. I really hope the members of the committee at the due course when we're able to will be able to come and visit the site. Um, so I think it's a really, you know, very impressive one. Um, so progress at towards completion has been delayed. Um, we've had some COVID related issues with the contractors on the site. You will recall the pandemic um, when people were oh, you know, um, displayed from going to their workplace because they're being in close contact with someone with COVID. So we had some delays there, and the delays from materials as a consequence of that as well. Um, so we're now looking for a handover. And the contract I've checked today, and the contract is still advising at the end of this month. So, so, I'm in the violence this week, I walk my dog past the river in <laughs> Well, that, they, they've, they've had a, a lot of sort of activity going on there. And it, it, when so, I'm in the van, so we must be nearly there. We are, we are indeed. <laughs> One that isn't um, anywhere near that stage is at 29, which is the site of the former AV Library Hall held within the general fund. Um, we've considered both AV members. Yes, 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 yes. and residents. And residents. We've all got our little places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Black and white stuff. Um, <laughs> But so we're able to consider that as a development as affordable housing that will need to be transferred over. Um, so it was considered which is too small for the CRL. Um, so we're looking at potentially uh, 16 low rise flats for rent. Um, so the technical team has been appointed there. And I don't want a bedroom or two bedroom flats, do you know? Um, I think there's a mix. I think it's predominantly twos. Um, I'm getting some more specifics of that. But we um, certainly will be carrying out local resident and member engagement with that again, you know, in the, in the coming early months. So the spring is best larger. So it wouldn't be expected for large families. It's no, their idea is that they would be. Um, to, you know, one, you know, one, one or two mid flats, obviously, the next there. Um, and uh, yeah, I will need approval to move the land, appropriate the land, mm -hmm. to show the funds to the right. But there will be a full detail. Consultation process for that, of course. Mm -hmm. um, then turning to um, sort of the car park sites, uh, to Darby and Crown Road, where um, there are 64 flats I mean, potentially looked at at the moment. It's general fund land. Um, we'll go through a process uh, to see whether that's appropriate and suitable for TRL development. 
recognise and approach that same 35% of units would come from councils, HRI if the council wished to, to, to take them up. Um, clearly this is an area in the town centre, um, it's an area of high accessibility um, and whilst I'll report to clear that you know, we would be looking for potentially um, the lower end of the council's policy for car parking, I think it, it, in a, an area that's close to the train station, the bus station, uh, but, but also fits within the council's requirements clearly, has to be within the policy. Um, so we'll be coming forward with proposals for that in due course. Um, and then the Argent Street car park again is potentially too small as a TRO scheme. And again, it could well be that um, you'd like to see um, perhaps 17 flats for um, council pay right there. Um, the, that one is quite a difficult site. There are a lot of um, underground service media, um, um, there's underground water drainage that runs through the site, there's other underground utilities that would need to be moved around, and that's expected, and that's in place um, pressure on the environment of the project. So we'll, we'll keep that on and review. Um, then there's the Richmond Road scheme that you're going to, which you know, we're aware of, is, is generating a lot of interest. Um, I thought I'd like that. Um, so this is um, the site of the former Thorough Adult Community College, together with some of the back clear the back plan site, but to be clear, it excludes the scout hall uh, at the Alcone Scout Centre. Um, so it's been reviewed for residential development, could accommodate perhaps 55 uh, houses and apartments, um, and we're sort of at the top of the feasibility viability stage. When will um, you start telling residents? Well, as soon as we're at the point, after the um, I'm clearly the donation, you know, it's due to that, I don't know if it's even started. It hasn't started, but it's um, going to happen at the same time. The UK Power Network have just said that they're going to dig all the road up. Right. So I've, um, I've did put in an inquiry and I'm still waiting for someone to come back to me because we can't have residents, they've been told they can't park there and now they can't park there because of the demolition, you know, they're going to have nowhere to park. So, um, so, so I think that we need to have a bit of a chat about like talking about like doing a bit of joint work in there. So, so absolutely, uh, my, my colleagues in the property service are a bit of that evolution. Um, but, but yeah, from a has development perspective, you know, we know that it's a small access. Um, we know that if we can, it would be preferable to try and drop down materials and supplies um, from, the, from, the, from the bridge. Uh, but, 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 you know, I'm getting back to the last one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, but we really basically don't we would recognise that we want to cause as least disruption as possible. Um, will so you make sure there's adequate parking? Like the parking, I mean, we will certainly make sure there's adequate parking from the new scheme. The new scheme will consume its own smoke is the best way in terms of its own parking requirements. Um, so again, the things are stage. Um, so I'll, I'll move on to January 316. To, which is Lindhurst Road, which is a garage site in Corrigan, identified by my colleagues in housing, as potentially suitable for a housing development site. Um, I think there's 67 garages there, lots of historic antisocial behaviour, lots of direct direction there, um, and, and quite, quite a modest number of units there for a flat development, uh, which we can, we can develop or a smaller number of houses. Um, then turn on to the TRL, which I mentioned. That the you know, TRL owned the Belmont Road scheme and drains, uh, and then clearly you know, value um, planning policy for projects that was previously considered there would require 80 homes, uh, sorry, would require 35% affordable. Previous applications for 80 homes, 28 of them would be for affordable housing. And it comes from TRL, material bulk, um, but we need to consider and we'll take that site forward so we can handle it. Um, because it's, it's in the material. Um, and the last thing is just to mention, this is probably just a bit of a, a link to future reports, is that work is ongoing to assess the potential in development of existing housing revenue account assets that do require expensive and major works to extend their lifespan. In fact, what we need to do uh, at Black Shops. 
um, typically there um, in the Indian towers of Akshot, um, and also um, in, in a block of three cars, three and four concrete mm. uh, flats so in Tebbit Avenue and Overland. So, what major works were these flats in Avenue and Tebbit Avenue in Okay, so that, I'm not. I'd say it's been going on for years. Yeah. yeah. Mm. No. sitting there two years ago. Yeah, so there are. Uh, um, there's uh, the existing boundaries, you can see the main concrete glass range for each concrete are um, cantilevered in from the existing structure. But you require um, up, upgrading, changing, supporting, that would require protection new walls to be put on um, the weight transfer to make that new structure into the ground the foundations. There's a, there's a lot of, well, I can't just tell you otherwise, there's concerns from residents who've been brought forward over there at back down the mold. A lot of residents are because they can't keep the places forward. Yeah. So, so, what we're, we're currently doing with this, um, mm -hmm. we, we need, there's been some initial um, engagement with the residents about it. Mm -hmm. you know, and some, some are owned, aren't they? There are a few. Yeah, I think that's complicated. I think five, and of course, you're absolutely right, that would yeah. complicate. And so, any solution needs to complicate. They have to pay for that themselves, don't they? Not money. And so, and it's meant to be temporary because maybe they might be putting it down. We don't know yet, do we? Well, so that's part of the next process. So mm. we would want so to come back to a private tenant, I think, then turning around on the balcony. And, and then pull it down. Yeah. Yeah. They've got it on their mortgage. It's a very complicated. Mm. Uh, Absolutely. So, 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 well, so, well, well, so, well, well, so, well, so, 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 Full engagement with the residents and things mm -hmm. So it's something on our radar, so a full complement of work. I am not you know, in a place that likes to be used full details or loans, but it will be coming forward. So that's my report. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you. Thank you. Nice going back in our meetings. <laughs> well, I was, I was actually on holiday the last one. Um, so You've not been here for a while. I've not, I think I'm just... Right. Well, we've had this, we haven't had no list of... We've had no list on how many in the set of eight. That's very true. So, it's not the... Joy, Joy, I've seen your hands up first, so I'm going to come to you first. Thank you. Um, I've just got three small ones, actually. Um, and I don't want to step on um, Councillor Pierce or Councillor Van Day's toes, um, but the one in Avely, which is on the library site in the hall, um, <coughs> even I've been rung up. I just whether we're making any provision for people to hire somewhere because there, there is, I don't know whether there's any other meeting places um, in situ for them to go. So it was just to let you know about that. Um, the other one was um, obviously um, Black Shots Flats. I'm a bit really annoyed about to extend the lifespan of black shots. Well, it's no good extending a lifespan of something that's not fit for purpose anyway, because we're being rung up now, Councillor Maney and I, with flats that have just been painted at Christmas, just before Christmas, and all the mould is coming through again. So I have reported it. Um, so I don't want money to be spent on black shots flats, that it's just going to be a waste of time. The consultation um was in favor of them coming down so i can't see why we want to extend those flats um i think that was the only ones i had um just you mentioned um about the affordable i don't think we've gone far enough with that because affordable is only if you can afford it so i think we've probably got a lot of work to do on that thank you chair Thanks, Joy. Pete, do you want to go back to Councillor Wilson? Of course, thank you. Uh, so, so, Councillor, I mean, um, to the Avery Library, I mean, it's um, certainly aware that there's a new council provision, um, which is just across the way, uh, that was redeveloped, um, to, re providing the library. I'm happy to go and speak with colleagues about whether that facility is used, can be booked, or whatever else there is in the area. But I, I'm pretty confident that that was considered as part of that whole business case. I think we both know that it, it was we were always told it wouldn't fit for purpose. Yeah, and that's why we won't be able to hire, hire it out. But I'm not sure that's correct. No, it was. It wasn't fit for purpose. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to address that particular but, point about what other facilities yeah. in the area are available. 
my colleagues elsewhere in the council will be able to give us a smaller event was the, the new hub yeah, i think that's what maybe yeah, yeah. i think they, there's opportunities to do some stuff there it's not very big but mm. okay so i'll pick up that on that particular point and, and we'll come back to more that's on what the facilities are on the area um, in terms of black shots flat so really i think maybe i've the way i've explained it is is has not helped um so what we're really doing is, is assessing the potential redevelop for redevelopment there so so that's I mean, that's what i'm saying is that's the piece of work that's going forward um i mean there will be the need to come up you know, to, to come forward in the future for the full report on that but that's what i'm saying i'm not sitting here saying you know we're going to be doing any works so if my colleagues um, the house will have a much better idea about what is what is in plan in terms of ongoing necessary works there but my comment was really about there is a process to consider the, you know um, the future redevelopment of those flats and i know that's what you, what you asked for and what you wanted so, so maybe it's just how i've explained it as, as led you to think that <laughs> Um, Thanks, uh, Chair. I, I just, yeah, I think it's Black Shots Flats are coming to Cabinet, aren't they? I think. Um, yeah, Black Shots Flats are coming to a bit. I mean, on the Black Shots Flats, there's water now running down the outside of Kiardi. Um, so that that is probably why they've got mould again. You know, the winter period's coming up, and having just painted over it, it's going to come back on again. So. I think to um, to word it in that way, um, not getting at the officer, but to word it in to extend their lifespan. No, they're already past their lifespan. Um, so to extend it, it, in my opinion, and probably Councillor Main is that we we don't believe in that. So um, obviously that's for us to take further. But thank you anyway. The final point about affordability, um, I sort of actually in at the start of the presentation. I mentioned that the council's housing strategy will be looking at affordability, and what that means for thorough. So there will be more coming on. When will we see that housing strategy, Keith? Of um, yeah. it's, it's for me. Um, so we're drafting. We've finished at the uh, engagement of the residents. Um, can't really sort of. Um, just remember the date. I think it's going to be probably around July. If I okay, one of the best things. It's, it's one of those, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's, it's either June or July in my, in my mind. Okay. It's definitely going to uh, uh, have a good draft by February, then it's going to be the end, it's going to be all of those. I think June or July. Yeah. And that will look at like people's incomes here, you know, what the need basis is, oh, so and all of that. Yeah. Okay, so that's really good. And when we talk about so just going back to Keith, so in this report, we've got 70% is the affordable housing, you know, like so it's 70% um, okay. of the market rent. The then in other rent. ones, we've got it's 80%. You know, we need to be clear mm -hmm. about what Borough sees as affordable mm -hmm. going forward. So when we're playing around with the figures, it's sometimes it's 70 and sometimes it's 80. You know, we must have a line. And I think that 70% is fine. And then we've got another one tonight where it's 70% plus £1,000. I've never seen that before. You know, like, so we've, we've got to have a be consistent in what we see is, and I think 70% is, house prices are just, I can't believe what I'm seeing private rents to go up like. You know, it is absolutely, um, absolutely astronomical what has. So we can't, you know, 70%, could even be way above, you know. I think mm. we need some social affordable homes well, uh, here well, in Bow. We've got around an ambition to build social housing as well as affordable. I bought a holder, Councillor Spielman, is very pro uh, low cost housing. Absolutely. But not just affordable, they've got to be social homes. Oh, yeah, social homes. Very yeah. pro, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Chair. Yeah, Chair, thanks for saying that. So I think we have got to be consistent. Yeah. You know, there is there is no good, you know, saying 70%, then 80%, and we've got to be consistent, or we we have it affordable is always we've always said, haven't we? Affordable is only affordable 
if you can afford it. Yeah. You know, so we have to be consistent in what we do. In the reports that are coming here, just tonight, we've got reports yeah. that say 70%, reports that say yeah. 80%. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, Thank I, you, I, Chair. I, I, sorry, I don't know the references, but just off the but there is a difference in terms of council's planning policy um, and the eligibility for the grant funding, which requires 80%. Um, so maybe there may, may be worth just reviewing where it says 70, where it says 80, because there could be a clear logical explanation why they did. Well, they have to say 80. Um, or oh, it has to be below 80. So if it's a non council development, so if it's a CRL development, of course, bringing grants. Then the rules are they must go and charge up to 80 percent. If it's the council home HRA, I'll have a look when we get close yeah. to it because right. it'll be in the late meeting. Has anybody else got any questions? Because I've got a couple, but very brief ones. No? Right, so if we look on page 14, 2.4, in the graph, you know, the red and blue blocks, mm -hmm. like you're not back at school, you learning how to do that. Um, <laughs> 37 so this is spades in the ground in the next in year 22 to 23 or yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you're so you're expecting to start on site 223 of these in the next so we are now in 22 so this is this financial year it's financial well we're quite in 22 23 financial year right yeah but we're nearly right yeah, yeah. so from, from april so 22 april. 23 financial year that's what the forecasting okay. is here, the starts. Okay, because I, I was sort of had a look, look back two years, trying to find some like a decision. And we've already got miles out from what we promised. We were going to do a lot more 20, 25, weren't we? Yeah, there was going to be a lot more development up on other sites that we yeah. control, yeah. So, so this is the old list. So can we just... So there's stuff gone off of it. So where's White Acre gone? Is that gone completely? Because that was ready to go for homes, wasn't it? So I'm probably asking the wrong person here. Right. Um, in that we've been led by our uh, social social yeah, it was on our list, wasn't it? Yeah, because it had sort of a full right. home in it. Um, but but the lead, lead on that um, and progress on that. Um, I'm afraid I can't answer you on that. Okay, question. that's fine. I'll send social care an email. And the Prince of Wales pub, so we pulled it down and yeah. we've now put nice meadow grass on it. It's been, it's been yeah. Been, yeah. And is that just staying flat now? And because we bought that under the HRA, didn't we? Yes. About 2015 right. or something. I, I think it's up yeah. in that area, yeah. Uh, when there was lots of talks about um, the state re renewal regeneration uh, on that location. Right, okay. Okay, cool. That's fine. Just and when can we begin to see something of a new pipeline? Well, quite soon. Um, there was, uh, again, housing colleagues have identified some garage sites, um, so also from our property colleagues. And as you recall, we've got this new approach to, um, such that we need to bring to you and to the portfolio holder and to the ward members proposals for those sites before we do anything else with them. Um, so we're working those up to get a fixed state to bring to, to you. And I'm meeting with colleagues in my team uh, actually this week to, to finalise some stuff. So quite soon, we'll see some new sites for consideration. Okay, thank you. So this is maybe by the end of the year, and before the next year. No, uh, uh, before that. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Um, you know the CO11. It says here the council has some, for some time supported. Residential development, is that a typo? I think that might be cabinet supports it. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had it near council to support it. I think there's been like a fair amount of like, we didn't even know about it until two months ago when it got announced. So I think that that might be just a little typo in there. Um, and all of the, my last question is mm -hmm. around, because I've covered um, Richmond Road, um, the Calcutta Road ones, are they all allocated? Are they full? They are not yet fully allocated as of information before Christmas break so maybe there, there might be more um, we've got uh, some on the back and floors that we are sort of doing a little bit more of a sensitive allocation because obviously there is this there's left there. 
so yes. there's a yes. yes. the so many problems. Everyone is keen on the lift, even though they are absolutely suitable for what it's doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're lovely. They, they, they are. They look really nice. Yeah. 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 Now, thanks for that, Keith. Has anybody got anything else? Because I know I can see we're already running, but I look forward to some new stuff. Um, coming forwards. So, can we agree the recommendations? <coughs> page of uh, recommendation 1.1 on page 13. Agreed? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Keith. And, and item 6 is publicly generation limited proposed development at the Colby Centre field in South of England. And this can be found on page 19 to 28 of the minute. And can I ask Julian Wayne to present the report? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Splendid, that's super. So um, I'm going to introduce the report, uh, Chair, and obviously I've got uh, Keith with me, and uh, well, I can't see him, I believe Mike is in the room, uh, if you've got specific financial questions as well. So uh, hopefully uh, between us we can uh, take you through this. Um, what this report is about is about the proposal for the route to development of the Culver Centre and Field. Uh, you will recall uh, that this is a cleared site that has now got a planning consent on it. Uh, the good news about that, obviously, is that it's a planning consent, for, as Keith said earlier, for 173 new homes, uh, and that includes uh, 62 uh, affordable. Uh, in terms of the uh, report before you tonight, obviously, as the scrutiny committee, it seeks your comments on the proposal and the report <clears throat> uh, when it goes to uh, Cabinet uh, will seek a uh, delegated authority to finalise the deal. Um, the report uh, describes the site for you. For many of you, I'm sure it needs uh, no description. Uh, and it also talks you through uh, the um, uh, planning consent and the tenure mix and uh, makes uh, note of the fact that the uh, uh, um, consultants and uh, tender documentation uh, and drawings are being prepared and subject to the governance and the final approval of the TRL board, those will go to the market. <clears throat> it also makes reference that we're still engaged in a certain amount of work on uh, cleaning up the title and the legal terms, and this will include the appropriation of the land for planning purposes. Uh, at section three on page 20 and onwards, uh, it takes you through the options that were considered. Now, this site is viable for market sale. Uh, it is, of course, uh, general fund land, uh, not pure HRA land. And uh, as a result of this, um, there will be the opportunity to um, uh, do, do market housing on it, uh, as well as the, uh, the affordable. It is policy compliant in terms of the amount of affordable. And um, uh, that's as a result of which uh, we end up with a proposal to transfer it to TRL. And uh, <clears throat> as ever, uh, the council in this instance will also make uh, a, a small return on the uh, lending the, the uh, finances to TRL. Uh, <clears throat> it looks at the risks. It looks at the financial parameters. Uh, ultimately, the finances uh, of of this are matters for TRL uh, rather than for the council, although obviously it does have to meet the council's parameters. Uh, the report gives you an indicative valuation at this stage. It is only an indicative valuation and uh, that will be f uh, ultimately um, uh, revalued uh, by an independent company uh, in order to provide an independent and fair valuation between the parties. But this is a what they call a residual valuation based on what the land is worth, uh, allowing for the sales and for the costs, costs of development. Um, ultimately, uh, this report uh, recommends the provision of quality housing for Thoric residents. Uh, it includes affordable uh, housing in here. Uh, you'll see, uh, just drawing on the point you were making earlier, um, 
these are um, uh, affordable rents in uh, in market terms. So you're right, these are the 80% here, um, but they are within local housing allowance figures. Uh, that's how it's been modelled thus far. Um, no doubt that can be reviewed over time. Um, but the uh, the scheme in general will meet the needs needs of Thurrock residents. Uh, that was all I was going to say at this stage. Happily take questions. And I don't know whether either Mike or Keith want to add anything for you. Oh, I'm happy to deal with any questions. If, okay. Yeah, if you. Keith, have you got anything to add? Nothing. No. Anybody want to go for their questions? Um, Councillor Van Dyke. Hi. Uh, most of the residents, they always ask, uh, you know, what, what about the infrastructure that a doctor's surgery and all that? You bring in 173 uh, the flats. No, houses. 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 houses and two and three and four big houses. So that, that could be 750 people. Two or three or four people. When you look at them all in isolation, I mean, that's what they, they always ask. So, you know, not, not necessarily against housing, it's just uh, will it block things up even further? Mm -hmm. So, options are Is that a question you can answer? I'm not sure if you can. It's just, <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. I'm sorry, sir. I think that's probably one for Keith. I mean, I'll have, have a little go at it and just to say that. Um, um, as, as I understand it, there is still scope on on waiting lists and um, uh, and uh, and the like. And uh, part of the reason why you're doing uh, in partnership with the health um, uh, bodies uh, to provide the better facilities in the new medical centres is to offer the opportunity for improved medical provision. And so in that sense, it's going hand in hand. But I don't profess to be any sort of expert on uh, uh, general practice in Thurrock and don't know whether Keith can add to that. So that's all I would add is that clearly that's a matter that is really you know central to a, a, the planning decision itself. Mm -hmm. So a planning committee they are fairly issues about the design that are relevant and are considered. Um, the, the application that went through committee has been approved did address that so I can't give the precise amounts but there are contributions um, mm -hmm. from the project to warms education, um, you know, uh, leisure, um, there's highways, um, conditions attached to it as well. So I have to share with you, Councillor B, the, the elements of the decision mm. and the um, conditions, but there are contributions to offset the impact as, as assessed part of the planning process um, on, on the local community for mm. those issues and those matters. Yeah, I think the hub is. There's going to be several sure. hubs, isn't there, yeah. around the area? So that should help. I think South Brooklyn is getting more actually. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. the last ones to get it, I think. Mm. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> so the certain financial contributions are made to other services for them to um, deliver the services mm. that require. Joy, I can see your hand up. Can run. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, just a couple of questions on 2.4, um, Julian. Um, just um, we don't seem to be asking for bungalows at all because um, there's a lot of people, obviously, in Farrot that want to move out of bigger homes into smaller, you know, to keep them in the community. Um, we don't seem to be doing that. And not much has been said, well, it's sort of a, a one liner actually, the reprovision of public open space. Um, it doesn't say what that's going to be or how big it's going to be. I mean, with a, nearly 200 odd homes, more than that, um, it'd be nice to have a little bit more open space. It doesn't actually say how big it's going to be. So if you could just enlighten me on that. Thanks, Julian. Yeah. So can I uh, draw Keith in on both those points? Because uh, obviously he was around at the time of the application. OK. OK, so in terms of the... Uh, public open space. I think that particularly refers to the design, such as the design that went through at least two stages of resident engagement and public consultation, um, set out a large central open green that's much more enhanced, much better quality um, than the, the field that's there. So there is some, some enhancement of the existing open space. I'm sorry, the, the, your, your first question against Councillor Jim? Bungalows. Oh, bungalows. Bungalows. Yes. Uh, bungalows. Okay. Uh, so no <laughs> bungalows on that site. 
Um, you know, we, we look towards across the whole program in delivering a range of different types of accommodations. So, although we have done some bungalows, <coughs> well, it needs to be um, the best of a fair economic um, proportion of schemes on there. So, to, to generate the incomes that TRL would need um, to be able to make it financially viable for them. So, there are, you know, there's some good open space being reshaped. There's the use of flats and there's also the flats at the front and then there has as well. Um, we will be doing more bungalows elsewhere uh, and, and indeed if you know if the other schemes come forward that TRL hold at the moment, they would include bungalows as well. Um, we haven't forgotten they are part of the mix that we have to provide. It just yeah. so that this site suited better in our view and many houses and, and apartments. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Thank you very much. Is that it, John? Nobody else got any? Thank no? you. No? Okay, so I'll start. Um, so, what well, very different approach um, to questioning, as I always do. Um, could you um, update the committee on the current um, status of TRL and the makeup of it? Because the last time, mm -hmm. you know, we had anything with TRL, we had one director who was. Um, the previous um, director of housing. So, what has been done by the council since then, um, and two of those who are then people um, that will be will be trusting um, to deliver our homes for us. So, I think um, the uh, the uh, the two two things to say. The the council um, operates a shareholder mechanism. Uh, through the uh, corporate director uh, resources, if I give him his proper title, resources and place delivery, I think it is. Um, and the shareholder obviously is using instructions uh, and liaises with TRL. Uh, TRL, I should say, rather than the council, because it is a matter for TRL, has recruited uh, board members. It now has a full complement of board members and a functioning board uh, that it can take uh, that can take decisions. Uh, and it is in a position to operate. Uh, it, uh, I understand that a uh, uh, an update uh, of the uh, the names, et cetera, of those people is being put out uh, to the General Services Committee, if I have that right, uh, over the next day or two. Uh, and I think um, apologies will be proffered to you for the delay. Um, and um, uh, in terms of uh, operation, uh, as, as you know, there is a relatively limited uh, uh, staff cohort, uh, basically uh, uh, essentially one person working for TRL, and uh, the rest of the uh, delivery is through the uh, service level agreements to the various services, uh, and of whom Keith is clearly one. Uh, but in terms of decision making, uh, there is an appropriate board there, uh, and that board is now constituted properly and can take those decisions. Thank you very much. And could you just take us through the process of um, how you will get the land valued, exactly what happens? So we've got an, an estimated two million cost, you know, um, and how you'll get, considering, you know, that we are, this is Thurrock's land, you know, how do we make sure that we get best value for the price of our land? So, I mean, the, <clears throat> the process is no different from any other disposal you would have. Uh, you will appoint an independent valuer, uh, no doubt from a uh, list that uh, uh, Keith and others contain. Uh, that valuer will be instructed to uh, to carry out an independent valuation, and um, uh, that valuer will then sign off uh, that you have got Section uh, 123 uh, best consideration under the Local Government Act, and um, uh, and that will be your um, assurance that you have indeed got that best value uh, for the council and for residents. And did we um, look at um, getting somebody else to develop this for us? You know, I'm quite happy with this TRL, but what what other options were looked at as to why we didn't, um, you know, private, it seems like a nice lot of land, considering like what people build on, you know, the Culver field and all of the <laughs> And that seems like a nice land. So I think that the developers, why didn't they want that piece of land? So if you look at the uh, options consideration at 3.1, um, you'll see that disposal to a private developer was considered. 
Um, and um, uh, obviously the advantage of that is you would get an upfront capital receipt. Um, it, it brings uh, with that certain number of risks. Um, there's obviously the risk of you getting uh, a scheme that will be different to the one that you've got at the moment, because a private developer might take a view that it wanted to do, do a, a different scheme and uh, get, get viability. There is the question mark about whether you can guarantee delivery, uh, because, of course, sometimes the private sector will hold or uh, as land bank, as they call it. Um, and um, uh, as a result of that, uh, you might not get delivery for some time. Um, and of course, by doing that disposal through what they call a development agreement, uh, you are reducing your control over the development. Now, there is a halfway house um, which uh, would involve doing that in partnership through a joint venture and um, you uh, can get benefits uh, through doing that. And um, you'll see that at three, four of the report, um, we've um, uh, commented on that. Um, but at the moment, the council doesn't have the partners or infrastructure to make that effective. And in truth, uh, while that would retain you some control, in isolation on a site by site basis, uh, that wouldn't give you particular financial advantages. If you choose further down the road to do a wider partnership with the private sector, that might be a different matter. But on an individual basis, it won't be financially advantageous. That leaves you then with TRL. And of course, the, the income, the result of TRL is that um, uh, you get uh, a degree of, well, significant degree of control. You get a long term investment and generation of returns. You get revenue receipts and a dividend at the evident end of the development. Um, and uh, you get certainty of delivery and you can still own the affordable units at the end if you wish. So taken in the round, uh, the short answer to your question is yes, it was considered. This is the best uh, place making advantage, as I said in my opening remarks, together with the best financial advantage. Thank you. I think it's, um, it's actually, I welcome CRL finally getting on with doing well. you know, It's been around for so long, we built the the Tilbury houses and it's just sort of kind of sat there idly for much too long. Um, I do have, Joy, did you want to do your question? Is it relevant to what's been talked about? Yeah, it's, it's just on the side. I'm glad Julian's brought that up actually because there is a lot of land in Thorough that is being land banked at the moment. Um, with TRL, Julian, does that not, if they get planning permission, have they still not under the same constraints as a five year build, you know, where they've got to put a spade in? on five years or does that not TRL does it doesn't come with those constraints no the planning permission uh, is entirely the same and you'll still right. be co conditioned in the way that the planning commission conditions say um it'll be um it, that'll apply to uh, uh the, the 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 developer that's doing it just as it would to anybody else all right okay thank you is that it Joanne? yeah thank you chair it was just i wanted to bring that up because we have got a lot of land being held in Thurrock, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, by certain developers who are just land banking, and I don't know how that five-year thing comes on this. I think a lot of the land has been is more than five years sitting on I it. Think, so. I think. I mean, it's probably not appropriate for me to speculate too much no. because uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not uh, quite close enough, really, to your uh, assets as as or to the boroughs. Uh, developers as, as as some will be, but I think it's probably fair to say that. A, good chunks of that land will be uh, waiting on the new local plan and seeing what that brings. Yeah, as I chair that, we'll, um, <laughs> we'll wait with bated breath, yeah. Get a move on. I will do, I am. Um, and I do have, um, so, so this is probably, I've left this question to the last because it is about the recommendations. Because um, the recommendations of why, how we are going to delegate authority so I think out of the people in the room, there's only me and Joy that was on that committee. But I did get a copy of the minutes printed off, um, and it was the minutes of the 11th of February 2020. And there was always this about um, how, you know, this is a big piece of land, and we're starting to sell off you know, big pieces of land. So Joy's mentioned it, you know, like it could be the land on our own walls where they want to build a football stadium, you know. So we've got to have a process 
we don't set a precedent that people can just say, well, those two people can make a decision to sign off any bit of land, right? Because that's what I am worried about <coughs> here. Um, so at that meeting, I asked specifically, Councillor Worrell saw how council owned land will be transferred to Thorough Regeneration Limited CRL to ensure that good value was achieved for the council. So I've asked that question. The Corporate Director of Adults, Housing and Health and Interim Director of Children's Services, which is Roger Harris, who was then, you know, stated that disposal of land would be recommended by Cabinet to be taken to full council as requested by General Services. Cabinet decision, then go to council for clarification. Council will request that the housing overview and scrutiny committee be kept up to date at every stage. So at every point, we have asked and we saw, and I can see it's legal tonight that it's saying that you know the cabinet has the authority, but I am very concerned that this year, five years. 10 years time that we do not allow two councillors and an officer to have full control over how we dispose of our land because that is taking us so for us to transfer this land to TRL we need to be making sure we get the best price which I'm happy if we're going to get important but I do not agree and I strongly do not agree that two cabinet members have control of this. I don't mind if cabinet say yes, and then they send it to council for clarification, because that is what right. should. So that all councillors say, yes, this land, and I'm not saying, and I think that it will be fine, but I don't want to set a precedent where we start giving two members out of 49 the direction that they can dispose of our land. So one of the recommendations tonight is asked, and it says one, but I believe it's now two that you want to agree it. Um, and I strongly don't agree with that recommendation. 1.2, I think that we need to that this is agreed by Cabinet and then ratified at full council. So, Chair, um I mean, it's entirely open to you to make what recommendation you wish, and I would indeed, given you the concerns you've expressed, I'd encourage you to do so. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure there's a lawyer in the room. If they are, I apologise for treading on their uh, on their toes. Uh, but I think it is incumbent on me just to draw you to your attention that the disposal of land is an executive function and therefore is a matter for the cabinet. That's not reserved by full council. There is an existing delegation to get uh, schemes into the capital programme, uh, which uh, would also uh, allow the funding of this scheme to take place. Um, and, um, and therefore, I, I think, uh, if I may, I think it's entirely open to you to object to the delegation and ask that the matters considered by Cabinet. Um, I think I would probably be, 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 be mis misleading you if I thought that um, a recommendation that council does this uh, was was within the law, but um, um, I'll I'll leave that to your judgment. Okay, I think that cabinet agrees it and it's ratified at council, so that we have always got a back of it. Councillor Redsall, can you come in? Yeah, chairs. So, yeah, chairs. Um, I think um, at your di it's your discretion, um, and I have got no vote tonight, so I can't really help you as such. But I think you've got to make it known on here how we feel as a committee um and that's got to go through to cabinet hasn't it you know yeah. you've got to make your view heard because we are an overview and scrutiny that's what it's all about absolutely and, and cabinet will make their own decision but i just want it to know tonight that my recommendation is as per the minutes at previous scrutiny meetings where we assured and we had that checked by legal you know yeah People remember that I, I spent hours yeah. on doing yeah. this point. Yeah. And, and, and we was assured that there would be no land disposal without it going through council. So I just am saying, so at some point, I haven't seen a corporate meeting um, change. 
I haven't yeah. seen um, I haven't seen it go to cabinet to change that. You know, there's been nothing come back to scrutiny to say that the rules have been changed. So that is for me why I cannot support recommendation. No, and I think you've you've got to make that point of perhaps going to cabinet, Lynn, and yeah. making that you know our views perhaps heard more. Absolutely. You know, because that's the only way that if if we're an overview and scrutiny, if we're not overviewing and scrutinising, we're not really doing our job properly. No. And, and I do remember that. I don't think that anybody else was, was on. No, on. There's only you and I, Lynn. And Keith was obviously yeah. part of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
For those that are yet to vote. You, you, you're discussing the, to have this discussed. Yes. That's the fourth. But we've got a vote on this. We've got to agree or you, and, and wait to bring this up again. It's not going to come back. This is, if we don't do this tonight, they will just go ahead and agree it. So I'm asking that for all I'm asking is I'm not saying they have, we want cabinet to agree it and then ask council to ratify it. And numbers in the chamber. I, I, I understand. But this is protected. This isn't about one piece of land. This is about, it could be a piece of land on your, it could be Joy's, you know, all of the flat land at the yeah. side where they're building, you know, and two people could then go and say, we are setting a precedent. If we if we agree this tonight. It's, it's, it's not a good practice. It's not a good practice. And practice. it goes against yeah. previous yeah. agreement. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't do this, Lynn, then... Okay. If we, if you don't do this as a committee, then as you said, you will set a precedence for anything that comes after that. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. if you don't, if you don't overview and scrutiny, it's, it's if you're saying yes and you're right. If it goes on any other piece of land on any other wall, no, 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 it will just be yeah. straight ahead, and nobody will be able to say because you agreed to that. So, 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 chair, if 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 I may, um, whatever the form of words you agree. Uh, and I'm assuming that you are um, using the, something like the words I reported of hearing you saying. Uh, I'm not sure what your normal practice is, uh, but I would have thought that um, a uh, short addendum that is then considered by Cabinet tomorrow is the appropriate way forward. Certainly that's what I have uh, experienced elsewhere. Can that be given to Cabinet? Yes, so when I saw you before um, the relevant dialogue, on the and and you can rest assured that I'll be raising the matter with the director in the morning so he understands your position yes okay can I just ask uh, joy um yeah I think if if Lynn's right. If we okay. if we just allow things to go ahead and we ratify and we say, "Oh, that's fine," then in future we have no say at all. Joy, so I'm getting the impression that if you were here, because you can't vote where you are, <coughs> no, I can't um, for this uh, to go forward. Right? Am I correct? Joy, if you was here, <laughs> would you be voting that that would happen? Yeah. <laughs> That's Sorry, right. Say that again. If you was here, yeah, we would be voting that it would be ratified by council and not by two members of cabinet. Well, I would, I would want something like that, as we can't do our job at all. Absolutely. So, thank you. That's so, that's can that's we that's put that's this to a vote then? Yeah. That <laughs> we, can we go? Can we put this to a vote that? We, no, I'm not there. I mean, you're not asking them to stop the development, Lynn. Oh, and, and I'm not saying no. No. none of that. I'm just saying the due process that has been previously yeah. agreed needs to be followed to protect not only this bit of land, but every bit of land. land. In yeah. future, yeah. I mean, most of us want that bit of land to be done anyway. It's been taken so long, hasn't it? <coughs> you know, most people want that land to go ahead and be a nice development. You know, so it's it's not that. It's just giving everybody that vote. Mm -hmm. Two people. Yeah. Yeah. To make that decision rather than That's too much power. Yeah. Sorry, I can't hear Augustine. Sorry. So, Julian, is there a way of rejigging this to make that happen? Well, I, I, I don't think, uh, if I may, um, I don't think you can um, uh, rearrange the recommendation that goes to Cabinet. I think that recommendation. 
A, the report has been published and B, it must go before Cabinet as it is. I you think as I, as, as I said earlier, what you need to do in the contents of in the context of your comments on the report, you need to do a short form of words that says uh, we do not. I mean, effectively, we object to the delegation. We believe that this matter should be decided by cabinet and referred to council. I mean, yeah. um, I'm happy to liaise on a form of words with Grace in the morning for you, if that would suit. If you want to send it straight across to me, and I'll agree it because Grace has got my number. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, obviously, I have to be neutral in this process, but I mean, it is within our, you know, in, in, in assisting you as the scrutiny committee, it is it is worth it is within our jurisdiction, if you like, to give you some words to use. Uh, but, clearly, but clearly, I need to explain uh, to the director what the uh, what the what position is. I can understand where Julian's coming from, but I think, as I've said before, if we don't question, we wouldn't be a scrutiny committee. We just okay everything. You're you're entirely it's entirely legitimate for you to question the matter. There's, yeah. no, there's no dispute about that. As I say, I'm I'm not entirely sure that you're right in law, but um, uh, <laughs> but you're in, but you're entitled to do that. We have a lawyer at the other end. <laughs> well, he's he's not disagreeing with me if he's there. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for that. No, we're all so we're finally moving ahead. I just want to move ahead in the proper manner. It's, it's just okay. about doing it. So, so we'll do that tomorrow morning. Yeah, we'll agree yeah. the words. Because it's too late for a recommendation, Joy, because it's all brilliant. Yeah. yeah. You can go to Cabinet, though, Lynn. I'm, I'm part of the hearing you tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. Or just, you can be on Teams, I mean, you know. No. I'll have a go. I'll see what I can do. Right, right. So, um, not agreed recommendation today. Okay. Okay. So, moving on to item seven. Um, so, Chair, before before I introduce this, um, <coughs> I am just conscious you've got a half past nine guillotine and you haven't done your rents yet. Um, no. So I and I do I I am conscious that is a matter that you uh, are obliged to do today. So yeah, I think events needs to be done, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we'll move that and see how we get on because we've got forty-five minutes. Whether we can get that on, or we might have to do the redevelopment. Mm -hmm. one. Oh, the redevelopment's cool. not on tomorrow night, either, is it? No. No, the rent's not either. The rent's oh, especially area is oh, okay, so. Okay. 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 So we're going to move on to item eight, which is on page 39 to 50. Yeah? Yep. Um, and Mike Jones is going to introduce this. Hi there, I'm Mike Jones. I'm Teacher Major Corporate Finance. I've got everybody before, but. I've been around for a long time, sort of doing the rent report and everything. So I won't talk through the report in much detail, but it's obviously there and a lot of time for consideration. So effectively what we've, we've got there, we've got a little bit of the background about how the, the sort of rents work. So they're regulated by the social regulator now. So every year we kind of have to review, make a decision, and what the sort of recommendation or the guidance is that um, HRA social rents increase in line with CPI plus 1%. So for the forthcoming year, that would be 3.1% was the CPI figure in September, which is used as the Canadian rent, plus 1%. So we'll be looking at 4.1% rent increase on social rents. So that's the kind of the recommendation as to what the proposal would be for the rent increase. I then within the report kind of shown what that kind of means in the context of everything else. So table one gives you a very high level kind of budget summary. So the point really within there is that even with a 4.1 rent increase, which would generate about 1.8 million, 1.478 million is inflationary pressures. So we're not really in a position where those inflationary pressures are going to exist and come about um, next year. So this is everything that's contractually obligated and all the other inflationary pressures which we're seeing um, accounts for 1.478 million. So that is the first call on that rent increase money. The second part, bad debt provision, so just for prudence, we have to allow a bit more of a bad debt provision with any sort of year given rents and particularly the current climate and everything else. So that gives a provision, that's 100,000. Um, 
Disabled adaptation, so we've got a proposal to increase the number of disabled adaptation in council properties. Council tenants aren't able to access the same kind of mechanisms that a private tenant would because of the kind of the ring fencing rules between the general fund and the HRA. So there's an additional bit of money proposed in there for capital adaptations. And the final bit is the capital financing. So with the additional capital financing funding, it enables us to um, finance the capital programme longer going forward. And I'll come on to that in a moment because that's a big part really of the HRA how it works and what the sort of the long term aspirations are. So effectively table one kind of shows what 4.1 represents in money and where that funding would, would be allocated. Um, the text then talks around that in a little bit more detail, um, meaning sort of paragraphs 2.4 down to um, 2.5. So part three is around um, service charges and rents. So again, it gives you kind of the context of what it actually means in real terms. So table two gives you an example of, um, and these are always done by property sizes and they're done by averages because obviously there's a lot of um, properties in there, so it always has to be done on an average basis. So page 42, um, table two, that would give you an to what this would mean for the average tenant. So if you took a two bed property, the current average rent rent is £81.17 p a week. The increase would be about £3.32 a week, so the revised rent would be £84.49. And that applies across all the makeups on a bedroom by bedroom basis to give you an idea of what we're looking at. So we're looking at an average overall of about £3.60 for the average tenant over the year. Um, there's a subtitle there about affordable renting properties, and this kind of comes on to the point, I, I think, sort of earlier about some of the difference in rent. So we have got property, so any property that's built as a new build property, and any property that have been built as new build properties, for example, it started with kind of the Seabrook Rise ones, these are under a different rent um, schedule. So these use what we call affordable rent, rather than the social rent. So the new properties are developed using these affordable rent calculations. And that's up to a maximum of 80% of market rent. We're not charging up to 80% of market rent. We're kind of trying to always keep them below and certainly below LHA levels as well, so that people don't run into difficulties where part of it's funded through benefit and part of it isn't. So everything is below 80% um, of market and it's below LHA levels. But we can discuss that a little bit later at the end because there's probably a little bit more to sort of clarify on that as well. So that gives the, um, the indication of the averages for what we've got, the, the non-social rent properties within there. Um, table four, um, that this brings in around service charges. So where service charges are deep pulled, the, the kind of the, the policy or the, the kind of guidance and aspiration is that any service charge fully recovers its cost. So obviously what we've got is um, we've got um, services and Caretaking is probably the, the, the bigger ones of the concierge which affect the most tenants. So we would be seeing an increase in, <coughs> an increase in the cost of the delivery of that caretaking service. So therefore, the service charge needs to increase in line with that increase as well. So all the inflationary pressures will also apply to the council's internal services. So this just represents what the service charge needs to be next year to try and meet cost recovery. We're not recovering the cost of these service charges because there is some disparity between what the increase would, would need to be to make it fully recovered so we're not proposing to put it up to the full cost recovery level next year because of the inflation pressure that exists we're going to look at that over the longer term so just bear that in mind is that these aren't fully recoverable and they they should be really or we need to aspire to be able to get to that um to that figure um table um paragraph 3.8 that just goes into some of the detail around the tenant engagement so we carried out the tenant engagement and we, we spoke to residents and um, the detail there again, again any questions further at the end garage rents is listed because they're subject to a separate charge as a traveler's site rent so these are again are, are separate sort of charges so traveler's sites again sort of the 4.1 percent is proposal in line with with social rents and garages, again, we're hoping to increase there to meet the costs. So table six is the um, is the capital programme. So this is where the bulk of the, um, the sort of the, the money or where the, the spend is. So just to make this clear, the transforming homes line is the 10.3 million in the black and 
right there. The other schemes underneath are all separate standalone schemes. They're not a subsection of transforming homes. So transforming homes is 10.3 million. And then there's all the other separate schemes which are listed down there. Mm. So as you can see, the, the capital program for next year um, would be the 31 point, yeah, 31.1 million. That's got all financed through a combination of, of borrowing and revenue contribution. So all of that kind of that rent money has to fund the capital program as well as the revenue side of things. So there's no external money within the housing revenue account because it's really fed from the general fund. It has to generate all of its resources through rent service charges. So it, it's contained within its own um, within its own funding stream. So when we're looking at these things kind of longer term, so obviously the capital program transforming homes existing stock investment. This is a continuous process for basically the life of the assets. So what we started to look at there, and this is obviously through Alistair Steen and Sue and, um, and Evelina. So we started to bring in things like there, like carbon reduction requirements into tower blocks. So the, the stuff which Alistair's working on at the moment is when we're looking at the tower block refurbishments, the carbon reduction is coming into that thought process already. So we don't want to sort of replace heating systems with gas boilers because after three years, you're no longer able to, to do that. So we're meeting those carbon reduction, um, addressing those issues now as part of next year's programme and onwards early rather than waiting until the end. Obviously, there is a cost associated with that because it's new technology in some cases and it's new systems, but it should, in terms of some of you know, the carbon reduction with the tower blocks and the, the, the alternative heating sources should benefit tenants in a more efficient heating systems. It will make the council future proof for carbon reduction requirements. So that's where a lot of the thought into this is going now. And obviously the rent funding is crucial to be able to finance these long-term capital aspirations as long as the, the revenue costs as well. So that's kind of how it all fits together through through that context. Um, I will then kind of move through um, just a little bit there in, in uh, paragraph four is just around some of the, the kind of issues which you probably will touch on um, sort of earlier as well. So with the, the housing developments at the top of the Georgian Way and Calcutta Road have all kind of finished. So that was kind of known as, as phase one of the development or the kind of the initial part. So they've all been delivered now. As you know, Calcutta Road is, is, is out to, to tenancy and everything else. In addition to that, through the use of the right to buy receipts and um, through the, the company FI, which you, which you may have sort of heard about, um, we've been able to acquire 113 additional properties sort of on the open market, or we're <coughs> to by the end of the year. So that's a, an additional number of homes which are in the council stock and able to let to, um, to, to new tenants in order to bring that through. That's kind of linking in with some of the um, homelessness and some of the temporary accommodation solutions so that all kind of fits together is to move people through temporary accommodation into a permanent dwellings where they're eligible so that's all, all coming together with that and again that's use of right to buy receipts and um, and the sort of the income coming in through rents as well and in table five uh, or paragraph five into table seven that just gives you an idea about the level of reserves as well so um, that would be the, where we'd be at the end of uh, this financial year. So we've got the minimum revenue balance, which we've protected. We've got a little bit more in there for sort of what we call the financial contingency reserve. And we've got some money set aside for HRA decants as well. So that's quite important that when we're looking at some of these um, redevelopment or regeneration projects, we've actually got reserves in there in order to help facilitate that and assist tenants. Um, you know, where, we're, where it's needed. We've also got some specific capital reserves in there as well, which we've got. So there is a healthy-ish reserve balance within the HRA. So there is some some level of funding that it's not continued to as well. And that's probably it in terms of the report. So, and I've gone through that quite quickly, so I'll, I'll stop talking and um, I'll be able to join your questions. Yeah, absolutely. Who wants to go first? I can see Joyce got her hand up. She's always quick. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I don't know if that's Keith that was speaking. Was it you, Keith? No. no I'm not on the screen. Am I? I can't see you. No, sorry. And I'm not being disrespectful, but I can't see you. So um, it's just a bit uh, for you and Evelina, really, that um, that 
I've got some flatted areas in my wall that have no lifts, no entry doors and no caretaker. But some of them were being charged for those sort of things. So I just hope that we've got that sorted out and we know where they are. Um, there's not many of them, but they've all got their own front door. So I hope we've sorted that out. Um, that's just one thing. And you know I'm going to ask about garages. I'm not too bothered about the amount is going up because it isn't that much. But if people are not seeing anything done to the garages fronts, then they're wondering what they're getting for their money. You know, so uh, just those two. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Anybody else? Nothing. I just want to say something. Uh, oh, it's, a, it's about the rate rising. Yeah. Yeah, so that um, so that repairs budget is split across. As you say, it's, it's all the, the, the revenue exactly areas. In and out of contract. So it's split. Up, yeah, it, it's basically it's void repairs, day-to-day -day repairs, planned preventative maintenance. Um, they're the three, and then grounds maintenance as well. So they're the three areas that. Not a lot of money, is it? Um, well, I mean, so when we sort of got the split of the allocations, you know, that's so that's twelve point two million. So if you effectively take the 50.2 million as being the, the, the total budget, if you like, total expenditure budget. So that's 12.2 million of a budget of, of 50 is what we're is what we're looking at. And then let's say that one does increase next year, but I think a lot of that is inflationary pressures as well. So it's kind of just meeting that kind of existence. I bet they've put their charges up to us though, haven't they? Well, we're kind of making the provision for it. I think it's still in negotiation as to as to what that will be settled at. But I think any external company is obviously coming forward with inflationary increases. And it's not just the the, the normal things, it's the supply chains and you know building in better supply of materials are particularly at a rate where it's um, yeah it, it's, it's at a really sort of high level rate at the moment you know so it's behind the national living wage the national insurance increase as well so those things all sort of build into the consideration on top of what you would just call the CPI. Our residents don't care about that because they don't see that they're getting a better service and we're the landlords and yeah, and you know, and their homes are, so, you know, like, and it is defensive, you know, your defense blows down, and we don't care about that more. You know, that goes on, well, we don't do that no more, you know. So I think that maybe something needs to come to this committee. So we need to know exactly what those cuts are like because we are the front end. It would be an idea if they gave us a list of what they're not going to do anymore. Because if you were private, we could even have a briefing note. Yeah. You know, on what's the changing? Because I don't see that 4.1 percent is value for money if people are getting less and less for their. So there's no proposal in next year's budget to reduce anything from what's being provided this year. Um, so if it goes back further, yet, we'll, <laughs> but certainly in terms of there's no proposal for any service cuts in any of the any of the areas in next year's budget. And that's effectively what the increase is doing. It's maintaining <coughs> an existing level of service. But if there's, yeah, if there's questions about what this level of service is, actually, you know, we, can, we can look at that. The tenants have been asked to do the repairs themselves, go out and. It's a small bit of candy over. But £80 or something, it's a lot of money, isn't it? And it's not there. It's not their prices. That's just an example. We shouldn't be 
asking residents to leave. Sure, it would be useful if we, um, the, the, the first person just spells out what we will uh, and do at the last yes, and, and the changes from what's changed, because I remember a while ago we said, right, we're going to, you know, um, linking tax and things anymore, you know, like washers and, you know, and and lights and some. I, I think what it may have been, it was at that period where the rent reduced down was obviously a really difficult, so there were significant cuts then. I think what this is kind of doing now, obviously with the increases, it's kind of getting it back to that level, but it's still, I, th I mean, I haven't put it in this table because it's going back a few years, but if you compare it, the rents were still 11% lower than what they would have been if the rent increase had never been put in the city. We're completely in our residence for a government cut, you know, and they're getting less service for more money. So the, you know, the latest repairs policy is is dated sort of September 2020. Yes. So there's not uh, we're not proposing any changes for 2023. So we will go yeah. alongside okay. this. Uh, a policy. So I'll send it to uh, uh, Grace for circulation. Uh, are there um, grants for people on health and medical? They will move up to the council. They will move up to the council. The housing benefits and the universal credit will be uplifted as well. It's working by like this. Uh, yeah. Right. You know. But the, the people on the basis stay will. Case for it. You're on benefits. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're all right. You're on benefits. Yeah. No, well, no, it shouldn't be our aspiration, should it? No. Are you all right if you're on benefits? No, I'm Chair. The people yeah. who are on benefits are, are, you know, being catered for. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Councillor Redstone. Can I just have my two questions answered? Has oh, nobody sorry. come back? Oh. <laughs> So I think one of them was to me around the service charges, and if that is the the, the email you sent around the uh, door entry system, or is or is there any other address? I think some people, Evelina, were being charged for caretaking. There is no caretaker. So, so I I would appreciate Councillor Rett, so just just a note yeah. with your addresses, and and I will get that to be looked into. Okay. Very yeah, summit offline might be better. I'll speak to you offline. The yeah. other thing was the garages. Was it? Are we? Although we're putting them up, we're not doing any work on them. Is, is it going to be long before we start doing some work on them? We we've got a line, and I'm sure Mike will uh, come into uh, uh, now. We've got a line in the capital uh, budget for investment in garages. Mike, over to you. Yeah, if you if you go to um, page forty five, table six, um, there is a line there. Um, the garages. About six um, garages. About like half a million pound. Um, per year, every year planned as part of that maintenance work. We've got to spend it. Did we have it last year as well? I, I think it's fair that it's, we've always, yeah, we've yeah. always maintained a garage capital. Well, well the last couple of years we bought it in, didn't we? Got some money out of the general fund and then it's ended up in the HRA general fund. Uh, didn't we do a big take out of the reserves at one time for garages? And then it's ended up in the general fund after that. We definitely took reserve money, a million, I think. And Peter is uh, putting on the main chat that uh, we responded to the question about the painting of garages because that was one of the questions that was asked uh, following the recent um, ONS. So, yeah. so it, it's there as well. Yeah, I think if Evelina, if we just do something aesthetically to them to show we are actually making them look better. Because if you if we don't look after the fronts, it makes the area they're in look worse, you know. So we need to do something. I don't think some of the garages in my area have been painted for years, years and years. The flowers is a, I went around the flowers the other day. It's a disgrace. Around it is, that. yeah. I don't know if them, somebody had to visit them. Definitely, yeah. The garages are. I don't know. Can't even put them down because people's houses are built attached to them. <laughs> so they do, they mad. But they definitely need to be a smart enough joy. For one time, do. Yeah. I'm going to agree with your garages for a change. <laughs> <laughs> um, what efficiencies have we made in the HRA? You know, like, so, you know, so we've got a cut 
cut this and cut that. But again, like last year, I asked for an efficiency table, you know, and then this year I still haven't got an efficiency table. It, it's quite difficult in terms of, you know, actually find those efficiencies. I mean, when you look at the makeup of it, I mean, the staffing is very lean. I mean, normally where you'd go to with anything, a bit like the general fund as we've seen and the, the savings coming forward. So the only place you'd really to go to in the HRA is repairs, which as we know, there's, there's probably never enough money, in, you know, within, within those, or it's kind of staffing. And the staffing structures are really lean in the HRA. There hasn't been any kind of additional staff brought in. The, the few staff members that were generally work on capital schemes, so their funding doesn't form as as, as a cost as in the same way as it would if it was a general like a revenue cost. Um, so there, there isn't many ways to go really. I mean, going back to it again, when the rent reductions were in, that took a lot out of the, the HOA, pretty much down to its bare bones. Now the rent increases are coming back. Um, and if you look at the past, you know, the past few years of rent reports, which we've done, it's not about increasing staff levels, it is going into the repairs. And there's some of the stuff around antisocial behaviour that we kind of were able to build in with it. So it's really going in a direct benefit to, to tenants, if you would, you know, and it's in all that existing stock levels. I mean, in order for kind of the repair and the maintenance and the constant demands and changes in legislation and all of that, they're all constantly new, um, new things. I mean, the power I going, everyone appreciates absolutely, I mean, but there isn't any funding that comes with it. You know, there's no sort of external funding to improve tower blocks. It all has to come through this rent income. So it's the only source of funding that the, the, the HOA has. So to make efficiencies, you would be cutting things like repairs, you know, or cutting things like antisocial behaviour workers or anybody that wasn't direct front line. So it's, it's difficult, really difficult. And I think if there was a list of them, it would be things that would be it would have a really dire consequence, I think. Okay. And, you know, table six, so there is carbon reduction requirements tower blocks, and then there's carbon reduction requirements external. Yeah, so that's so kind like of... So, 25 so, million in carbon... So what we've got, so what we've kind of done there, so, so the tower block stuff is the immediate stuff, which is sort of the heat pumps and all that sort of thing coming forward. The rest of that really, it sort of comes into what's affordable through the borrowing. So the kind of numbers at the bottom of that, which are about the financing of it, is effectively saying that to do all of this over the next five years and all the accumulated borrowing will cost the HOA about £1.4 million a year. In yeah, but what costs. is that carbon reduction requirement? That's really so, a provision. Because it's more money. Well, it's a provision for everything else which is going to sort of come about. So that's going to be the biggest call probably on the sort of the things which develop. I mean, Alistair will probably, you know, talk much more than I can, but there'll be so many things in the future which could be a part of or replacements, or in actual fact, rolling out this kind of, this um, this sort of heat pump solution and these heating solutions to further tower blocks. But at the moment, I think this is covering the ones. It's covering three. It's covering three, so that could be. So is this a council thing rather than, as well as, like, why have we not, you know, I'm just thinking the next year's work program to have different stuff on here. You know, is there a reason why wouldn't we have a report? We just got two lines in here where we don't know what it really is. You know, um, and we've got the carbon, you know, commitment from the council. You know, how does this all go together? And what is the other people's budget for carbon reduction? You know, or is it just housing that's, or is it? You know, across all of the I'm not sure it's all. I, th I think in, in housing it's a bit more tangible because obviously works are being done on the tower block. So obviously having that foresight to think, well, actually, rather than do something now to future proof long term. So I think the immediacy is there more in, in housing. It certainly, you know, works with the green tower that way. The wider thing, I, I'm not sure about the wider general fund, the, the wider council approach. I have got a few more questions, so I think we'll probably this will be the last report. Um, so I, I did raise this with you last night, but I think I need to be open with it. Why have we got um, the the highways and lighting? Why are we borrowing on the capital fund for highways and lighting um, when I've never seen that? On, I, 
had it before that the general fund HRA pays for highways and lines. Okay, I'll, I'll start on this one, but I did ask you to find out because it's something that I just, I've never seen it before on these. Uh, what it effectively boils down to is it, that kind of that ring fencing between the HRA and the general fund. So when something's deemed as HRA land, it becomes the responsibility of the HRA to maintain it or improve it. So if you've got, say, let's say you take Seabrook Rise, for example, the, the, the street area or the walkways yeah. in Seabrook Rise is the responsibility of the HRA, not the general fund. So the cost associated with any of the lighting on those specific housing estates and those people is the HRA's responsibility. So what and always has been? It always has been. It's yeah. just never been a budget though. It's probably something we've kind of done bits with and used bits of transforming homes and all of this, but I think given the kind of you know the, the, the capital program priorities, I think that's a sort of a targeted really a, a targeted investment into lighting in those areas. It is what's been deemed as what's needed. So rather than it just being a, a you know a little bit here, a little bit there, there's a actual targeted aspiration, 400, 400, 400, 400 every year to put you know 400,000 pound you know per year into actually improving lighting and, and walkways and, and those areas. And how much of this four percent increase is going to be the you know, what is, you know, what if we only did 2%, you know, what, what, which is the normal, which you come to us every year and ask us for 2%. This year you come and ask us for 4%. You know, it's bad enough giving people 2%, but 4% in a perfect storm world where everything else is happening in the world is... is so if, if, we were, if we were doing that, I mean, this is, you know, kind of high level, but if you're on table one with the rent income, there's worth 1.8 million. So if it was 2%, let's say the rent increase would be roughly half of that would be 900,000. The inflationary increases alone is 1.478 million. So straight away, in order to make the inflationary increases, you'd have to cut services by half a million pound just to meet the cost of inflation. So you would be then into thinking, actually, if you kept rents lower than what the recommendation was, you'd be making efficiencies or cuts in the services in order to meet the inflationary cost. So, you wouldn't get any benefit of it. You'd have a reduced level of service just to meet inflationary cost pressures. But these buying new homes, we are going to be borrowing on the fact that we've got more money in the HRA, yes? Yes, but it works on the site. So anything which is a new home obviously comes with a new income stream. I'm not about this fee and, you know. Oh, sorry, sorry. You know, I'm not on about building new homes. I'm on about us purchasing. Yep. So this HRA increases stock so some of the income you know we are borrowing on the fact that we've got this extra income yes that's right so if we if we get a five property obviously that comes in that's um leased at a not at a social rent at an affordable rent so at a, at a level which is you know an affordable rent level so they will be paying income the level of income is enough to cover the cost of the borrowing so that effectively becomes self-financing. So we've set the levels in a way to make sure that the cost of borrowing on that new property is funded out of the new rental income. So there's no subsidisation of all the existing tenants don't subsidise the new Another properties. Okay. It, they're also, and that's how we, sometimes when you see a difference in those rent calculations, because we're trying to keep the rent as low as possible, but make sure it still covers its borrowing or, or leasing costs. So that's why sometimes there's a little bit of a differential, depending on the property value, obviously, and, and what it would be. So that's why there's the sort of the, the, the what we've called the, I think we call it the non-social rents, because it makes it a little bit, it's not social rents, it's, it's, it's We do stimulus. need a separate table on that in the future. I did talk to you about that before, you know, I don't want to not be, an, right. so if I go to that, right, so does anybody else understand the workings of this? and how we lease them and how they feed in. Do you understand that? It's, a bit, um, it's, it's, it could be made it's easier. very, very it's complex. Very so yeah. I think that um, we do need something yeah. here because last year we got one line that was buried. This time at least we've got a paragraph or so of it, but still nothing tells us how this, this we've got this new, um, got fee yeah so we've got this new 
um, relationship with this external organisation. We've already bought houses or lease houses using our right to buy receipts. This is how I see it. But we don't own these houses, even though we're paying our right to buy. But then B have got other people above them that are Topland and somebody else is a Topland and Olympus or something. So this, it then it, there's another few layers, you know, and then we still don't own these, but then people are guessing, do we own them in 10 years? I've seen a press release saying, oh, they won't own them for 10 years. Well, I know that it's a lot longer than that. We don't know how much, we don't know when, we don't know who these people are. And I think that this committee should be given a full structure of how it all works. And not all, and I understand that there'll be financial stuff attached to that that you don't want to put out, but I think that how the structure works is so we can see. We didn't know about it until yeah. like it was announced, oh we've got we we're housing all the homeless people because we've got this new organisation and, and it's amazing it's not costing us a penny and it's not this and, and something that sounds that good you just think it yes. can't be that good. You know, so I just think that this committee, I think it'd be nice in yeah. the early part of the next, maybe the first one back, that we have a just a, a report to say how that all works. Is that all right? Yeah. Do you, yeah. It might not be us, but no, no, I just no, think no, that who is really sitting here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we would, I mean, me and Evelyn would have eaten with um, yeah. Brian earlier on as well, and they're very open about things. I mean, a, a very quick summary, but we'll do a paper. I mean, yeah, it, because it's, they're it's, advertising for workers to go in and work and to do the maintenance on the thorough properties. And I was like, really? You know, like, how does that work when I thought these were ours? And they was, we was going to have a budget line for paying for that out of ours, but... I don't know how it all works. So then I ended up even more confused. We can do that. I mean, this is in relation to the capital work that they do in order to bring those stud properties to a level yeah. standard. So what we then do, we we attach the defects liability theory to their work. Right. So those workers, those operatives, will pick up if anything gets kind of, you know, goes wrong with it during the first year, I think, with the defects liability theory. So they're not maintaining them, they're just maintaining the work that they did but you know that yeah but we as a committee yeah. don't know oh, no, but that. i want to clarify yeah. straight away yeah. that we are maintaining <laughs> them okay. absolutely and it's also you know we're buying other properties on the open market you know if you can contain some of that yeah, in there I as mean, well yeah. you know how many are we adding on because if we're buying properties then no, we're selling properties but if we're buying properties we're then going to add them at affordable rent and they're not a social rent and so that should be increasing our HRA. I don't understand why we've still only got the 50 million. Yeah. We're buying stuff. Well, yeah, it, it, I, yeah, we can we can explain that. I mean, the issue really with the social rents is, I mean, you're looking at if you look at the average rents in the table, you're looking say an average rent on a two bed of 84 pound a week. Well, if you work out the following to build something new or acquire it, it is a lot more than 84 pound a week. So if you charge social rents it wouldn't be enough rent to cover the cost of the borrowing or the acquisition or the lease. So you would be subsidising that rent from your existing rents. So there's 70%. And then you sort of see how it comes, comes forward. So yeah, so what we try so what we try and do with, with the rents we try and set is the 70% of the LHA level plus the thousand pound. What's that? So the LHA level is the that's the benefit cap. So that's the most the government will pay in housing benefit for a property of that size. So I think a one bed, for example, is one hundred and sixty-six pounds a week. So that's the LHA level, which is pretty comparable to the affordable rent level. So if you take the average market rent for a one bed in Thurrock, let's say that eighty percent of that is what they call the affordable rent. So let's just say it's a thousand pounds, but you know, for, for argument's sake. So affordable rent would be eight hundred quid. The local housing allowance is the amount that the government will pay up to in, in housing benefit or universal credit on that property, which is probably relatively similar. So under the rules of affordable housing, the council could charge up to £8,800 a month for one of those properties. What we try to do is say, you know, what is the cost of the borrowing or the lease? How much do we have to charge in order to make it self-financing? 
And that was coming in round about the 70% of local health and allowance plus the repair and maintenance cost. So that is lower than the 80% of market. It's lower than the housing benefit cap, but it gives us enough to make sure that the properties don't aren't subsidised by the rest of the HRA. So you can see how it's moving. No, that, yeah, so we can, we can bring so that into So you know and we don't, and all we've had is one line here and there. And mm -hmm. And the committee, I probably know much more because I have my own meetings and even I still don't really understand it. So I think that this committee, um, going forward next year, I think it'll be that everybody should understand exactly what that relationship is and how fee works with their people who finance them. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right, I think, I don't think I've really... I absolutely, you know, yeah, of course you can. Absolutely. I keep hearing about the, I'm going to mention it again, heat pumps. Is this going to be a theme? I'm going to go straight away. Yeah, I'm going to go straight away. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go straight away. 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 Yeah, I'm going to go Take them to the property. Um, absolutely, on any heat pump, there's going to need to be electricity um, used as part of that. But in terms of the infrastructure in the, the town blocks now and the storage radiators, we've done all the cost modeling, it's significantly cheaper in terms of the residents, and it's all got the savings for the household, etc. And it's actually a lift the lot of yeah. residents who are currently in fuel poverty will lift them out of that by installing this. <laughs> It's, it is a new technology and uh, it's going to be a lot of learning. I think we'll still see more traditional sort of systems that people are more accustomed to with boilers in their homes. It's been installed in a very range of blocks across the country and it's been very successful. I'm thinking about it as well. This is ground source heating. This is ground source heating. This is what we put in the chapel flags. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, then. Take them forever. <laughs> I mean, all the people would be moved out before they get married. Oh, yeah. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So let's wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope it's always quite up to date because we're waiting, and we've got somebody to do it yet. Well, we have it wanted, and so people will be doing something very soon. We'll be looking to start. Well, so, uh, a couple of weeks. Wow. <laughs> well, they won't be in this year. Be in next year. Yeah. And the home can start on site in March. Yeah. Just a bit of winter. I just want to turn their reading on. Okay. All right, the bulk thing. And so just before we move on, and I looked at the recommendations, and I know we've only got a couple of minutes, service charges. So is there nothing that we can do, you know, to contain? I just worry that we've got a perfect storm. Like you've even built. In a month, like rents has been, we've met our rent income, we've met our rent income, you know, and we've collected our rents all year, all of the indicators have been fine. Now we're building in bad debt for rent, you know, we've got gas and electricity is going up, petrol's going up, cost of living's going up, rents are going to go up, service charges are going up. We've got a perfect storm coming our way. Is there nothing we can do to look at? Reducing the amount of money we pay, we have to, when poor people have to pay because they have the unlucky job of living in an high rise flat or sheltered, or you know, it's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it represents, you know, as I said, I mean, I won't think, it represents the cost of the service, but yeah, fundamentally, the, the cost of the service is, is what drives it. and. Yeah, I mean... You're uh, expecting bad debt, aren't you? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's just an, an accountancy, a prudent thing, that anything, when you're looking at an increase of, of rates and just, you know, and to be honest, it, it is a sort of provision, you know, the, the, you know, the, effect, the effects of the pandemic and the longer term effects, it's just prudent to build that in. We might not need it, and if it's not needed, it will go back into the housing service and, you know, probably improve something else will be re put back in and it will you know so even... how do we know that well what so we, we can come to you and say don't come near us with four percent next year because <laughs> like, i am really struggling with four percent and as well as as well as service charges yeah. 
And four percent of this is linked to inflation, yeah, so it's what yeah, we're experiencing yeah, yeah. at the moment. And is the September I think inflation it's the highest. Well, I think it's ever? I've never said it before yeah. until the green four percent. But yeah, obviously it is the CPI driver. So who, who no, I, I think actually, I think the October figure was higher than the September well, figure. So they took the September one. So yeah. I think it actually would have been five yeah. percent if it had been so. But that's an indication of the actual real cost. Wages, wages are going up. Okay, so what we don't, we're not voting on this anyway because this is a cabinet. I think we'll just comment, comment and yeah. And I'll then just ask yeah. us to comment, and I think that you've probably gathered enough comments from our discussion tonight on that. Yeah. Has anybody else got anything else? I can't see Joy Zander. No. <laughs> you better not be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she's angry. <laughs> um, tonight's okay. so no other questions. No. no okay. So can we agree the recommendations? Um, set out recommendation 1.1234 and 5 on page 14. Okay, so we have two reports, but we're out of time. So we, we got the ones done that were mandatory to be done tonight. We've lost the office. We've lost the office. <clears throat> They've cut you off, Lynn. <clears throat> they can't hear us, I don't think. No, I think I think it's them that's frozen because we can we can we still can hear speak. each other. Yeah. 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 It might. College has just cut us down. Is it? It might be the half past nine cut off and they've cut us off. Yeah. Yeah. Hold the plug. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, with, with your agreement, I'm going to go because we're not going to do the reports. Well, you're uh, not because half past nine, they've got to go anyway. So yeah. that'll have to come back yeah. at some time or an extraordinary one. I'll have to be. Well, there's to Grace going. Look. Do that one. Yeah. 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 So uh, I'm going to get my tea, I think. OK, don't blame you. <laughs> Good night, Cheers, all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. All right.